Jay Reynolds, I was, I was, um, cause I, I you know, it was Jay and, and, um, I, uh, I was like, oh, Jay Reynolds, is his last name Reynolds? Or is that John Reynolds? Is that a John Reynolds guitar? What the fuck? And then I looked at your Facebook and it was obviously Reynolds, but yeah. John Reynolds is a friend of yours. Is that family? No, nah. no. Nah. Nah. So like I've worked for John. Yep. Like it, my first real job was working for John. Okay. Um, that surname is like a. A blessing and a curse. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's weird. So my yeah, my first job was working for at John Reynolds Music when it was Billy Hyde's. Yep. So it's changed hands a whole bunch of times over the last kind of decade. And or it's so. gone now, isn't it? Yeah, it's all gone. It, it, it was John Reynolds at the end. Yep. He had it for the last, I reckon, three four years, yep. something like that. Honestly, don't know. But um, yeah, and but it, it's all completely gone now, and as of. I reckon, yeah, probably about a year ago now. Yeah, yeah, because I walk past that, yeah. that building sometimes and it's almost sad. It is. Just going past and like, yeah. what the fuck happened to music in Adelaide, man? Yeah, Al- yeah. Then Alan's shut down, was Alan's that earlier this short- year? Or? Yeah, shortly afterwards. Yeah, I mean, that was going to shut down a few years ago and um, mm. and survived. But, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and so, Jay Reynolds, Reynolds, and what's your what's your company's name? What's your shop? The name? Sound Garage. Sound Garage. So, the, so there's kind of two entities. There's the Sound Garage, which is the shop, repairs, servicing, maintenance, and um, customization, all sorts of stuff like that. Yep. And then there is the Jordan Reynolds Custom Guitars, which is very much its own its specific own piece. thing. Yeah. Yep. So yep. that's um, yeah. I mean, I'm. I set I set them up as two different things because I really wanted the sound garage to be more than just custom guitars mm-hmm. because that my background's in repairing and I love doing stuff like that. You know, I definitely building buildings is is what I enjoy the most. So, absolutely. are you a, a, a luthier? Um, depends who you ask. I don't really refer to myself as a luthier because a luthier, like if you if you if you ask people in the luthier crowd that's someone who makes violins and and stuff like that okay. or it's come from making lutes yeah um so, hence the name hence the name luke uh, uh, man so yeah. that making a lute must have been a fucking fair like common job back in the day if they got oh, its own yeah name. yeah well guitars are quite recent um yeah you know. i don't know a single lute player though neither do i damn and i'm apparently a luthier so <laughs> you think i would <laughs> yeah but um I don't know, you know, a couple of people play some other weird ass similar instruments, but yeah, lutes are lutes are very uncommon. Yeah. Like, there's lots of other weird ass instruments. Weird out fucking there. wooden instruments and yeah, string yeah. instruments and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Heaps of crazy stuff, but not really lutes. So that yeah, so I, I refer to myself as a guitar maker. Yeah. And that's also because I don't really think of myself as this kind of master craftsman who like luthiers are they're these kind of people who go into tiny little rooms and, and pull out tiny chisels and perform magic yeah. and do curses on bits of timber and yep. and these amazing <laughs> instruments that have this awe come out of them um i'm i'm not that kind of guy so um, what would you describe your uh, your version of this craft guitar maker guitar maker yeah and um guy who cuts shit up and hits stuff and yep <laughs> gets angry and no <laughs> no not that <laughs> but but yeah I'm, i don't know I, I don't i just i think of myself as more just a dude who makes stuff yep. yep like anyone who knows me anyone who's been in my workshop and messaged me just had any kind of interaction with me generally learns pretty quick that i'm i'm pretty chilled i'm 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 open about it i'm not <laughs> There's a lot of old boys Not in the industry that are calling yourself yeah, a luthier yeah, and exactly. going, well, you know, this actually took me yeah. 57 hours just yeah. to make this small amount of fucking yeah. whatever. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And they're super protective about their techniques and yeah. And, and it's very, very smoke and mirrors and, and, and very much, you know, they're, they're very tight about 
and yeah. how they talk to who so about who, what. Who taught you to make guitars? Um, the person who taught me to make guitars was me. Yep. But that, that that's I did an apprenticeship, um, which was about six and a half years in all up. That was that was for another guitar repair in town who. Um, but that was that was really in guitar repair, and yep. it was. I mean, I, I went into it going, I want to be a guitar maker. Yeah. But I spent that time repairing guitars, doing restos, and you know, building a couple along the way. But I wasn't really a guitar maker at that point in time. Yeah. I, I knew it all individually. Yeah. It's a bit like, um, you know, being a mechanic and and being an engineer. You can fix anything on 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 a car. You yep. can rebuild any component and fabricate anything, but you've never built a, a car from scratch. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, yep. it was a bit like that. So, um, I kind of think of myself in a, in a way as kind of being self taught as a builder. Mm-hmm. But I definitely did do an apprenticeship in the industry as a so, but, and which was which is really be- beneficial. You know. Um, oh hell yeah! Like, yeah, apprenticeships are amazing. It, it was a great thing. The yep. best thing that ever happened to me. But what were you doing before that? School. School. Yeah. How were so, you at school? Um, I was all right, but I was I was a bit preoccupied with with just trying to be a rock star. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're going to be preoccupied with something, you may as well do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I was I didn't I didn't hate school, and in hindsight, school was great. Um, I wasn't one of those people who was just like thought school was dumb. Yeah. You know, I very much respected school, but I liked it. I wasn't a straight A student. I. I was generally pretty good at stuff, yeah. But I didn't really put much effort into it, yeah. Because yeah. I, I was, I, you know, was very much. You were there because you had to be there and kind, kind of, of went, the, yeah. All right, this is what we're doing. Yeah. If I, if I don't on. have, if I don't have like a, a practical out kind of of something, I just I tend to just like not really care. Yeah. And not, and kind of half assed a bit. And I was definitely like that at school. And I, so my apprenticeship, I started while I was at school. Yeah. I did that as a school based and started that study year eleven. Okay. And as soon as that started. School kind of became like, it was just, if I was at school, that meant that I wasn't out working on guitars. Yeah. And it was kind of a bit of a bummer to me yeah, about yeah, that, yeah. you know, like all of a sudden I'd scored this amazing job. So I went and did work experience with, with the place um, and left work experience despite the fact that I'd like totally fucked up a rad guitar somehow. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm not going to say where it was. Anyway, actually, no, you know what? Everyone knows where it is. Uh, so Adelaide's pretty small. Anyway. Adelaide um, is very small. Really small. Yeah, and anyone who knows anything is going to know. It's real small. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyone who knows me knows where. But anyway, I, I, I fucked up a guitar, but somehow walked out of that yep. week with a, a job. Like no he shit. offered me a job at the end of it. He said, if you ever want a job, come back. Yep. So I rang him back a week later and said, um, I'd love a job. Like, can I do an apprenticeship with you? And... Um, and the dude said, you know, that'd be great, but you, you've got to finish school. You know, I yep. want you to finish school. Come back to me when you finish school and you'll, you'll get a job. And I I was like, sweet, that's cool. And then after that, I thought, you know what? There's no way in hell that some dude's going to hold a job open for two years in the most sought after job in our industry. Yep. Like yep. every single guitarist is like, my dream is to be a guitar maker. No one's going to hold a job open. There, there wasn't even really a job open. It was just, yeah. he said, offhandedly like that yeah so then i went back to him and said actually you know what? i can through my school i can do a school-based apprenticeship come work for you day a week he gets r- great government um support incentives and incentives and, and, yeah, and yep. um, reimbursements and, and blah not that he had to really pay me anything anyway it was so little at the time uh means i get to go still finish year 12 by starting apprenticeship yeah my foot in the door so i did that um started that study year 11 um and yeah, so year 11 and 12 were- Did, did you keep concentrating on being a rock star? Uh, a little bit. I was at that <laughs> point in time, I still liked the idea of playing guitar for a living a yep. bit. Um, it's not, it was kind and of- that's a, a lot of kids' dreams though, isn't it's it? It's everyone's, yeah, yeah it's every fucking, kid who plays guitar. If you can dream. get paid for fucking playing guitar- yeah, it's the coolest thing in the world. And fucking yeah. touring and hanging with your mates and getting fucked up and exactly. doing whatever the fuck you want. I mean, yeah. take that with every opportunity Absolutely. you can. Yeah, that, that is, is sick. the coolest thing in the world. So if it, someone offered you that right now, would you do it? Oh, I don't know. Probably. Yeah. If oh. they told me I couldn't make guitars and I could do it, then I'd tell them to get fucked. But yep. if they- <laughs> um, you know, I asked 16 year old me, then shit, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I think 
like very shortly after that i kind of like i went straight into the music industry so i actually i'd already had a job at john Owens at this this point i was working friday nights and saturdays okay yep on the weekends i'd go down there and and do yeah late night shopping and and saturdays at, at john reynolds and just like cutting open boxes and pulling yep. guitars out dusting them and kicking doing shit. whatever you're told to do and doing whatever i was told yeah. to do and just a fuckload of vacuuming and like yeah. <laughs> i just is yeah. it funny though when you start a job and like you know i've i've always been lucky enough to work within an industry that i, I was really interested and passionate yeah. about and and um you as you i guess as you um you know, I never took advantage of that. If I could be around and vacuum around motorbikes and shit, I'm vacuuming around motorbikes. Yeah, if yeah. I'm polishing helmets, I'm fucking polishing helmets. Yeah, like, yeah. Who cares? At least I'm here. Yeah. And then, you know, years and years go by and then people come in and um, they start their job and then you're like, okay, well, there's the vacuum. Yeah. What? Yeah. What do you mean, man? Yeah, so I was totally the opposite That's of bullshit. that. bullshit. I will, I will yeah, do absolutely you, you have to be. Yeah, yeah. You have to be. Yeah. If you're going to last or if you're going to make a career out of out of an industry, then yeah, yeah you got to fucking take the good with the bad and sometimes yeah. you're shoving yeah. shit sometimes you're uh, it's a foot in the door that's yeah. fucking rad and there's yeah. heaps of people it's amazing how many like I get I get people I would say once a week who come into the shop and as a customer or, or wander in and then afterwards they're like man if you if you ever need help around the shop if you like do you need any employment like, like you're looking for employees or do you do training do you do anything and heaps of people are just like you know man I'll do anything like I'll just come and I'll like I'll make you coffee and I'll, I'll sweep and I'm like cool idea but I you totally wouldn't, man. Trust me. You don't yeah. want to come and hang out for a day a week and literally just sweep because, like, just there's a shitload of sweeping to be done here. Yeah. And I could have you sweeping a day a week. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. It's and you, you've got to do that kind of stuff and yeah um and not not pulling the whole like back in my day kind of all that shit or you know <laughs> yeah you, like we didn't even have brooms when i was yeah boy. exactly we yeah shuffling with our feet exactly you yeah know how many splinters i've got in my toes <laughs> yeah exactly yeah you're lucky if you didn't get beaten for sweeping but yeah I, that I, was I, a good I, day yeah that was That's a how good you day knew you were sweeping good yeah yeah oh he noticed me <laughs> he only beat me three times that day but yeah i'm not, I'm not into into that whole like you know gotta earn it shit but at the same time you you've got to take whatever opportunity you get oh, you got to you take can, opportunity I, I think choosing, there's always an aspect you know? of you do have to earn it in whatever you do as well but yeah. you know it shouldn't be um it shouldn't be held over you like a fucking you know nah, fucking exactly. anvil or something about to drop on you or something yeah, like that yeah. so you're like it was um it was uh, a mate of uh, i guess a, a mutual mate of ours hincy yeah um who said to me dude you got to fucking interview this guy he's got a like he makes guitars on Hindley street yeah so fuck off hincy yeah you which is a hooked, ridiculous no sentence. one mate <laughs> <laughs> fucking guitars on fucking yeah. Hindley Street and then I looked and then it appeared that you in fact do make guitars on Hindley Street yeah. how, how long have you been there um we moved in there uh March last okay. year yeah, so, so just so right months. yeah 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 and um and how did you and why Hindley Street like it did, seems like an odd Hindley spot didn't choose Hindley didn't Street didn't choose Street. Hindley Street don't regret it it's rad yeah. um I was just so John Reynolds was showing signs of not going to be there forever. Yep. So, and also be, be like John Reynolds for me. Oh, okay. So, the shop started in John Reynolds as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, should, we should I should put that in context. And so, <laughs> yep, yep. So after working um, for someone else for about I think it was eight years, um, finished my apprenticeship, staying there for a little while. Yep. Basically, just got bored essentially. Um, few things in the business that just weren't me and yeah so and i and i was really at the point where i'm like i want to be a guitar maker i want to yep. take this from just being yeah, a bloody good repairer and- to being a, a, a guitar maker yeah so that was when i decided to start my own thing at the same time um i've always been really good friends with all the guys at john reynolds yep um in phasey one of the dudes who was there who is actually john's son-in-law yep said to me we've got this little room um do you want to rent it out for fuck all and have a little repair shop and just basically set yourself up from there and yeah. and, and start boot so i went that's fucking right that's my out so rented basically a room in their shop for um it worked out to be yeah probably about 18 months something like that yep um 
and yeah so I, I was set up in there and but i was seeing signs that it wasn't going to be around forever and i was starting to expand i needed more room started looking around for about a year probably trying to find something and i was, I was like oh, i love being in the city i like being yeah, in the heart yeah. of it um i'm a young dude i stay late i work late i yep. hang around people call me at literally people call me at 12 o'clock at night man shit something's going on my guitar i'm making my stage in 20 minutes can you help me out yeah yeah totally i'm actually at a gig down the road kind of my shop and all that sort of out so i'm, I'm That's i've always fucking cool i like i like to be like that i like yep. to be pretty spontaneous and um and because i work late but i do go to heaps of gigs and i, I like to hang around with that kind of thing being in the city was was pretty important for me yep. and for the convenience of it but there's no way in hell that i was going to find like a warehouse or something i was looking around at warehouses in the city and they're like 60 70 grand a year yeah and it's like man how the fucking anyone afford that how do these like little warehouse cafe things where people set up and just like make coffees all day in a warehouse yeah and they still pull rent i'm like man it's i just couldn't comprehend it um it's a lot of fucking coffee it's a fucking lot of coffee man it's heaps it's mental <laughs> it is mental and i'm like i'm like selling guitars for five six grand i'm like i, I, I no way in hell i'm gonna be able to pay rent doing that like yeah let alone when you're making coffee for three dollars yeah 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 exactly right <laughs> exactly right yeah. on a fucking twenty thousand dollar fancy ass coffee machine yeah, as well because yeah. you're a fucking hipster and if yeah. you don't have that coffee machine yeah bloody da exactly you know what's <laughs> gonna come to you with the keep cup thing anyway um yeah, so it's hunting around forever. Um, this popped up, this place on Hindley Street. There was no info. It was on commercial real estate. I just yep. been trawling that for like a year. There was no info on it. It was literally a photo of the front of the building from Google Maps. And it just said Hindley Street, Adelaide. And I think it had like the square meterage. Yep. Nothing else. Yep. And I was like, you know what? I'm getting really good at calling real estate agents and having them laugh in my face. So let's call these guys rang him up and the dude was like um there's not really he said oh, it's not really ready for anyone to come check out it's it's been has been used for a long time and we still yep. need to do some renos and get it ready for a business to come in and i was like sweet don't do it don't do anything can you just let me see it before you do anything because if i'm going in there you don't want to turn into offices you don't want to yeah spend right. all this money and like putting a nice carpet and then i'm going to throw a workshop in there or something yeah so yeah my my attack was can I get in there and check it out? See what we can do. Um, save you guys a bunch of cash renoing it. Yeah. And potentially get me some good value rent. Which is exactly what we did. So, um, yeah, went in there and checked it out and went through a couple of months of, of negotiating and trying to get the paperwork all together and me convince myself that I can take on my own shop, all yeah. that kind of stuff. And That's then, a scary move as well. Yeah, it was shit scary. Yeah, yeah it still is. Yeah. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, it, it was definitely pretty, it was really exciting. And then all of a sudden, you know, you, you get these like stacks this big of of leases and stuff and you yeah. start going through it and then and and you know the agents are saying stuff like oh this is only a small one so we probably won't get lawyers involved and you're like lawyers what the what yeah, why are you even mentioning why do you mean lawyers, lawyers? i haven't even fucking agreed to pay yeah. you anything yet and you're yeah. fucking on me with lawyers yeah i'm like well, <laughs> shit this is full on so it's you know it's yeah it was pretty scary um but basically managed to to get the place secured but we had like a week by the time it was done, I wanted to open on a certain date. Yeah. And um, I think it was between like gigs or something like that. There was like a killer gig on and then there was a killer gig on another and there was like a gap in between. I was like, I don't want to have my opening day on the same day as these gigs because everyone's so going to yeah. be, oh, it was Day yeah. of Clarity. That's what it was. Oh, day of Clarity was yeah, on. Yeah, and yeah. it was because that was during the day. I'm like, no one's going to come to my opening party if Day of Clarity is on. Exactly. Yeah. And that's like, that's my client base is Day of Clarity. Yeah. They're all my dudes. Yeah. So um yeah so that's why i did it so that meant that i i had a week to to go from signing the papers to opening it so we had to like no shit. pull out floors repaint floors build a wall rebuild a floor because the floor was like caving in <laughs> i had to repaint the whole there was a hole in the ceiling that like you could you could fit like a I don't know half a car through it was massive no there shit. was this hole in the ceiling it was like this big you it was just rain coming hole. straight through oh it was like right through yeah dude you could see the sky <laughs> it was ridiculous <laughs> no one had been in there for like 10 years or something so wow. it was just trash this place no and we shit. had a week to get it so we just I just pulled us and called some mates and yep. um and basically just said like I need this need this who can give me a hand and yeah 
people came forward and and we we did it on like no budget yep and yep. had some mates come in and paint as so basically my band is a painter so he came and hauled ass for a couple of days and got yep. it painted a whole bunch of my mates are like um artists so they came and painted the stairwells all these murals and stuff nice smashed it all out crazy quick um with a whole lot of yarnies and beer and it was killer so yeah yeah and before you know it we're in this place so so you made your yeah. deadline fucking good open yeah totally yeah it was good fun yeah yeah i was fucking wrecked and did it work like out sweet being between the gigs as well like yeah at least there's a bit of hype and fucking there was. shit going on like a good a good run because yeah. shit doesn't happen like that in adelaide like it doesn't you know we get our mad march where you yeah. can go see people at the fringe or the adelaide festival yeah and it's like boom mm. and then silence yeah yeah and, and that appeals to this group of like just people that it seems it, we, we're really good at putting on some very um uh, uh manufactured festival yeah events yeah. in adelaide we're fantastic yeah. at it and yeah. and um yeah like day of clarity is a bit different for us i mean we get skipped mm. on everything yeah um so yeah the, i reckon that would have been a fucking perfect time he was it was perfect rad time yeah we had heaps of people there a whole bunch of cool mates came along yeah. um there's someone vacuuming out there yeah man you can only hear it through the headphones that's it that's yeah cool. it sucks <laughs> I don't know why. I thought it was a phone. Don't worry. Off. You wait until she gets near the door and starts fucking smashing the door as well. It's like <laughs> what that's the a, fuck, man. That was your phone going off again. That's the no. shittest ringtone ever. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no. Timing wise, worked out really well. Heaps of people came along, had a great time. Um, yeah, and yeah, lots of it was. It was sick. Yeah, I, absolutely right. And at the time, I, I actually didn't have all my shit in there yeah i still had half my shit at john reynolds but i had my machines and i had these big ass work benches and it, it looked really cool yeah um, yeah and it's, it still looks really cool when it's clean but there was just like i've got so much shit in there now but it was, it was a good time so how big is it it's 89 square meters but it's basically i've got a room oh is that shit for a podcast telling explaining it to the room <laughs> a here. room about this big yeah. <laughs> or that <know>. big <laughs> not this big or that big but it's basically yeah. like yeah it's 89 square meters and split up into like a two thirds of it's a workshop and then a third of it's like a little shop front with a little setup desk and we put, yeah. out, put in a wall there and a kind of mezzanine and um and i wanted to there's a big thing is i wanted to have windows so that if you're in the shop front you're, you're in the workshop like you can see yep. everything yep. there's yep. no the only thing you can't see into is my dunny and spray booth yep um and and that's fair enough yeah exactly yeah <laughs> are they the same pretty place open, as well sometimes <laughs> so they were sit there just they were gonna be <laughs> they were gonna, <laughs> gonna be. be yeah pretty much everywhere we looked i was like anywhere that had like a, a, a male and a female toilet i was like shit yeah i can turn that toilet into a spray booth <laughs> that's pretty much how it went <laughs> the spray booth is is actually it's just an office that was yep. there um there was like because it was like it was a, it used to be um uh db magazine that's actually yeah, right. their old office yeah okay so the whole thing used to be a massive office that was theirs and then i i guess it was you know editor's office or something like that yeah yeah so, um and, that's, that's and where it. you are, I mean, that's a pretty cool... I mean, you're pretty much just across the road from Enigma, aren't you? No, next door. Next door. If you drill a hole through my wall, yeah. you're in Enigma. Oh, yeah. there you go. It's crazy. And then you go the other way and yeah. you're in Jive. Yeah. It's the best. It's it's fucking awesome. That's a perfect I could not have spot. hoped. Like, it was, it was, you know, like, there was no way in hell that I was like, oh, I need to find a place to put my shop. Let's go find in between venues. Yeah. No way I was looking for that. No. Have you had people make comment on that before? Like, how the fuck did you get this spot? And yeah. what the hell? Yeah. Who have yeah. you whacked off for this? Exactly. This is yeah. crazy. Everyone's, that's everyone's thoughts. Yeah. Like, how the hell did you get that spot? That's what you should start doing is just going like, I whacked off that guy. And then yeah. this dude's going to just, if you want it, out of the blue, just like get yeah, off yeah. at all these wristies. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck's going on, man? I don't know. The weird old, but weird yeah, old. I'll meet you around the back. <laughs> weird old Chinese dude who owns the building. Could dig that. I don't know. I don't know. If any man wants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe not. Maybe get someone else to, to yeah. suggest it. I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, everyone, everyone's constantly commenting on it. But it's handy though because a well, the venues are there and and yeah, like people literally ring me. I had a dude a few weeks ago who was like, um, oh, we were playing. Actually, it was a gig that I was playing and one of the opening bands. And he's like, wanders over to the shop. It's like seven thirty, so technically the shop's closed at six. Yep. But I'm always there late, having beer with some mates, or if I'm playing, we we're playing at Enigma next door. And 
had this dude wander up and he's like hey man can you can you fix the jack in my bass i'm like sick i'm like oh you're playing with us tonight and he's like yeah yeah and i looked at it and it's like the whole plug is just like gone like there's there's nothing on there whatsoever and he's like can yeah could, could you fix this up i'm like yeah i totally can what the fuck were you gonna do if i was in here yeah yeah no shit <laughs> Dude, you're at the gig <laughs> what and did what he have you? a plan no, I don't know. It's just like, oh, I don't know. And it was literally Something that was, was his reaction. Happen. Like, yeah, you, yeah. you're going to steal someone else's bass. That's what you're going to do because this, just like, it's gone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, this jackal's gone. And but that kind of shit like that happens. So, yep. yeah, people, it's a, it's a really handy spot to be because of that. Yeah, and, and also really handy because you just be like, I'm just next to a jive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, it, like, boom, done. Do you do you find that um, even during the day that that's got good f- uh, foot traffic around that area mm. and whatnot? I mean, you're right near the university as well. Yes, yeah, exactly. It's uh, yeah. it's all kind of happening yeah. down in that area. I mean, not only that. I mean, when I saw that you're on Hindley Street as well, I was like, man. Obviously, you can you can tell if you're putting in that much work as a, a young businessman mm. that you're going to be there late hours and like Hindley Street's got some fucking shit going on down in late hours. It's amazing and. Uh, yeah, how, how do you go yeah. with that? Have you had any? Um... Had a couple of couple of weirdos wander up. Yeah. Um. Actually, honestly, it hasn't been too bad. But maybe I'm just saying that because we've just been through winter and like summer is like peak party season starting. Yeah. True. True. All the meatheads are out on Friday yep. nights and stuff lately. The last like fortnight, I've noticed it. Like all the footy trip dudes, all the I have seen all a lot the bucks of and all that stuff. Yep. And you're like, ah, oh, summer's here. Heaps of footy trip guys and, Heaps, and like yeah. I was seen a guy the other day. It was about two thirty, three o'clock in the afternoon, and him. Oh, they're you know, ripped by then. Oh, mate, he was fucking smashed, yeah. and he was walking along, and he's just kicking a footy up to himself, walking down Hindley Street barefoot. And yeah. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, man? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that, that's nothing. <laughs> the, the worst thing out of all of this is that you're walking down Hindley Street with bare feet. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, exactly. So fucking disgusting, yeah. man. <laughs> Our half of Hindley is not too bad. There's like, there's more for like halfway through. Yeah. So there's the, the eastern half is, that's that's the pretty dirty scunchy bit. The, yeah. the western half's not too bad. They've like, they've done a whole they've bunch of cleaned it up a lot. And, and, yeah, yeah. And there's yeah. cool restaurants and stuff now. It's not like, there's no, no you know, not there's anything wrong with strippers, but there's, there's no dodgy strip joints around that area. There's just restaurants. Do you think it's the strip joints that are, uh, are causing the problems though? Cause no, like, not at all. I've it's never thought that. Themselves. No. 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 I, I, um, what is it? Fucking Red Square and the bloody uh, the wall shed and stuff yeah. like that. I mean, there's that's that's where I've always um, uh, seen or or heard of issues and, and yeah. troubles and stuff like that. But yeah. like looking at the um, looking at the fucking paper any day really nowadays, you can see that someone's either getting beaten or stabbed yeah. or robbed exactly. or fucking. It's uh, it's getting pretty hectic around around those areas. I yeah. just saw like I was looking at um, at Facebook before and seeing just an, uh, a news thing come up. Just a, a um, where was it? No longer. So no longer is not the greatest place, but you know, still sixty fucking needles they found in just like a park, just a kids park. What? Sixty. Sixty. 60. Oh, that's a lot of fucking doing? needles, 60 man. Needles. Sixty Christ. fucking needles. It's just crazy. Wow. I'm like God damn, man. Like you, you know, the, it's. I don't like to look at the news a hell of a lot because the news um, seems to you know exacerbate the bad and really yeah, tell you yeah. the good. But um, that's like that's a pretty confronting kind yeah, of thing, absolutely. and, and yeah. um, you know you see just up and down through even getting up into Rundle Mall and whatnot. You see, uh, like there's some kids the other day, and they wouldn't have been more than 15, 16 years old, off their fucking face, mm. and uh, just abusing the shit out of cops. Yeah, like, what the hell are you doing, man? What the it, fuck? yeah? Hindley Street, like it, it attracts some amazing characters. It's, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, like every city's got its street, got King Street and stuff, and yep. Melbourne. It's yep. like it's the same. Working there and running a business where like I would, I would say I probably see more of Hindley Street, like the the demographic, the, than almost anyone else because yep. like I can be there at four in the morning, starting and leaving. Yeah. So I'll see everything in between, and yep. it's it's there's definitely some serious characters there's there's some interesting ones but but there's ne- another side of it isn't there yeah like I don't ever kind of go like I don't ever feel unsafe I don't ever worry about the fact that the door to the shop's open almost yep. all the time like if I'm in Spraybooth I'll close it or if I go to Dunny I'll close it but it like it almost it's almost always open and I'll be yep. working there until 2am in the morning and most of the time I just leave the door open because half the time you, you get you get a couple of dickheads wander up but most of the time you just get like a couple of dudes who are on their way to Nigs to go check out some cool bands and they're like this dude makes guitars and they hear 
a bands are going they're like let's doors open let's go have a look yeah yeah which is yeah. rad and people wander up and i might be there with a mate having a beer and you before you know you're having a beer with this total cool dude and yeah having a cool chat so it, it's actually it, it's pretty chilled like that it's not too bad i've had a couple of people wander up i had one dude who was just this is early on and who, who thought that the places i get people thinking it's a club all the time yeah because it's black door like gold writing no one's fucking reads the writing it says guitar maker but <laughs> they look at it and they see like black gold writing well, they're it like, looks like, they're like that sounds like a fucking yeah. sweet club <laughs> like, it must be hectic <laughs> and so they wander up and they're like oh i didn't know this was a club and then they walk down and then one dude wandered up and i've got like a couch opposite the door you walk in yep and he wandered up and he just i was there with another customer of mine and and he wanders up and he's just like plumps down he's like oh what beers do you have i'm like did you even look up when you walked in he just looked below the floor and it's all couch and we get onto that and anyway hang around for a little while we managed to finally get him out and convince him to leave and he was like falling asleep as soon as he got down he's just like oh i'm out i'm just falling asleep managed to get him out and then i've got like two sets of stairs and i've i've walked around and i was like should i should keep an eye on him and make sure he, he doesn't fall down the stairs or something like yeah, that yeah yeah also had my phone out at the same time i was feeling it <laughs> <laughs> so i was like luckily i was like i was also filming it for two reasons a because i'm like this could be hilarious b if he stacks it yeah and yeah. he like breaks his neck this is big. i could be liable <laughs> yeah. so i'm gonna film this <laughs> filmed it and he, he did he stacked it and he just went boom square into the wall it's like a concrete wall and he just he, he like stumbled down a couple of stairs and then just like head butted the wall and just and then like went and then just kind of got up and kept going i'm like man you are lucky that you are out of it because to any other person would have just lost their shit at that yeah yeah just knocked himself out just about out cold <laughs> so he was the in stairs. the drunk and just able to hit anything yeah yeah that good bounceable kind of yeah. you know he was very malleable it's hard to get that drunk these days man fall over and it's just all all pain all, yeah exactly. all fucking pain nothing well, anything pain. it's all pain get up and it's all pain in the morning yeah <laughs> yeah nah wait till you get real old man in fact it doesn't matter how drunk you are it's <laughs> just you're hitting you're like oh it's wrong <laughs> so he didn't fun. smash any guitars or anything like that though no i haven't had anyone do anything like that thankfully yeah, which yeah. is you know touch wood not good yeah enough. absolutely absolutely because yeah. your, your guitars aren't just um you know i think then the, it it's a work of art it's not just a uh, run-of-the-mill shape it's not a run-of-the-mill mm. guitar it's um yeah you can see through uh through your social media and whatnot some of the process and, and things that you go through and um so you you call yourself a guitar maker do you call yourself an artist no nah, i don't i never oh i was Sam from uh, TK? SK, SK Designs. SK yeah, Designs. Yeah. He, he, to quote him, he, not, not to paraphrase from him, he, uh, what did he say about being a designer versus an artist? He said an artist makes something out of thin air. They create yep. something out of nothing. A designer takes it and just kind of tweaks it, tweaks and it rearranges it. it. It's, I, I kind of think of myself like that. Yep. Like, I didn't invent the guitar i yep. didn't invent this curve i didn't invent doing this particular thing on guitar this you know i might come up with new ideas and new finishes or new inlays or stuff like that but they're all very much taken from somewhere else and just yep. put in a different combination and, and a different and tweaked it to the way you stuff. like it and yeah exactly yeah. so and so i don't really think of myself as an artist like that i don't i, I don't draw i don't i i I make stuff like I, yep. I can't. I can barely even draw a guitar. Yep. I can make it. Like you can draw. <laughs> you can draw anything on a napkin, and I'll like I'll go out and make it on it's something tangible. You can. That's yep. so that's totally my jam. But yep. yeah, coming up with 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 drawings and designs and stuff. It, I, I mean, well, I mean, I do design my guitars, but yeah, it's I just I just don't think of it very much as an. You're still taking cues from. Yeah, yeah, yep. exactly, definitely, um, and. I know lots of people What's who What's your favourite type of guitar to, to, to build? Oh. You mainly do electric. Do you do acoustic yeah. at all? No. I Well, I can, but I, I don't because yep. I'm, I'm very much like if I'm going to do something, it's got to be a bit different. It's got to have a, a point of difference. It's, it's got to be pretty cool and exciting and, 
Um, yeah, yeah. And you can see that through those guitars that, that yeah. are on your social media. There's some fucking beautiful guitars. Yeah. And some and some of the paint jobs, man, are yeah. spectacular. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. I did yeah, you put a lot you put a lot of effort into into making stuff different. Yeah. I mean yeah, I mean I'd say that, but at the same time a- a- anyone who's in the industry could probably go, Oh well someone else did that exact thing but yeah it's about those combinations of someone else has done this finish yep. someone else has done this shape or you know this timber or something like that but okay well I, I got those and I flipped them and I did different order of that that's, that's all guitar making is really yep. Yep. Um, but uh, do you look at the style of like do you get people to ask you to build them a guitar yeah do you yeah. look at their style and their music and does that give you kind of ideas and cues of like alright this is gonna fucking this song this guitar this is it. Kind of. Yeah. You can, you, a guitar is very much like a personality oh, absolutely. of someone. Absolutely. It's, it's yeah. I mean, I, I I do build a couple of guitars for sale, but very rarely. My, almost everything is built to a person. It's, yep. it's commissioned by a person. Um, and yeah, it, it, the process is, you know, you sit down and um, almost all the time. In fact, I think, I, don't, I can't think of anyone where it hasn't been the case. Uh, I know the customer already. They've already been a customer of mine through repairs and stuff like that. I've already yep. known them for a year or two most of the time. I know what they're looking for out of a guitar. I know the kind of things that they ask me to do to their guitars, know what they play. And um, you, you, you can get a pretty good idea before you even have a conversation. you got 75% of the guitar in your head and then you, yep. you chat to them and you go, okay, cool, man. So what do you what do you want it to look like and not necessarily shape wise because i've got my set shapes that i build i don't you, you can't come in and be like yeah i want you to make me a guitar that's this shape crazy out there fucking i want yeah. a draft shape guitar yeah no i'll do shit <laughs> like that fuck it <laughs> sounds <laughs> rad <laughs> but um but it's, people come in and say you know can you make me a stratocaster and i'm just like go buy a stratocaster yeah <laughs> pretty yep. much yep um but but yeah, I would sit down and work out what do you want it to look like? It's more visually, okay, do you want it to be a really pretty guitar? Do you want it to look badass? Do you just want it to look scream out metal or do you just do you want it to scream out jazz? Yep. And things like that and yeah, work with them and plot it out and, and you know, find out personal things about them. Who's your it, core customer? What kind of music? Um, I would say like progressive metal dudes, really. Yep. Um, yep. They're the most open to different designs. They like a nice combination of guitars that look badass, but better pretty yep. still. You know, they like nice finishes and So, still look and, like kind of jewel-like. and Yeah, yeah, exactly. Still look high-end and classy. Yeah. They like that. Um, and but, what, what kind of sound are you putting out with these guitars? Like, a, a, do you, do you Electric have, guitar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, like there's that fucking, there's that kind of, there is like a jazz groove kind of yeah. beat or feel, not really yeah. beat. Um, yeah. The feel to guitars, you can get that real twangy fucking Stratocaster kind of mm-hmm. fucking noise out of things. Yeah. You can get that deep grunge fucking real growl. Yeah. Is there something that you aim for with your guitars to, to give that? I mean, it's all well and good having the looks and the feel. Mm. You've got to have yeah. the sound as well. Yeah. So. It's got to work. Yeah. yeah. There's no point yeah. doing it if it doesn't work. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't have like a signature sound. I don't think, at least not something that I consciously try and do. It's like, oh, this is my sound that I want. Yeah. I, I try to make guitars real sounding. Yeah. For me, it's very much about um, presence and, and clarity and um, uh, a guitar sounding. It's kind of like going like high def. You, yeah, yeah. You, you know, you've, you, you look at something on a on an okay tv and then you look at the exact same image on a high def tv and you're like all that same stuff's there but it's just better yeah (laughs) you know that's kind of what i I shoot shoot for with guitars so top end you know like clarity and brightness you can crank it up as much as you like on an okay sounding guitar and it's just going to get brittle and horrible and harsh yeah get a really nice guitar and you can have lots of top end and it's clear and it's bell like and it's 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 nice it's crisp yeah uh, it still resonates it still resonates <laughs> yeah it doesn't it doesn't just get brittle sounding yeah you know? that's stuff like that or, and once again with the bottom end you, you want lots of big round bottom end but you don't want it to sound unclear and woofy and muffled you still yep. want it to be you know very clean so that's the kind of I mean and that's not necessarily something unique to me that's that's just high end guitars in general that's what people are shooting yeah for. yeah I guess that is what anyone um, would shoot for yeah but is is there, a, is there a practical way of going about that is there something that are do's and don'ts with thickness or or the yeah. shape of you know because you, in my mind there's always just two general shapes of guitars and mm. you've either got a Gibson or you've got a Fender yeah. and yeah. then they sound very different and they take yeah. those real 
um, the extremes of each side, you know, a, a Gibson's just that real beautiful kind of molasses deep kind of yep. noise out of it, yep. and that Strat is just fucking screaming your fucking head off. Yeah. Yep. So, is that through shape as well as components? Is that something that comes into it with electric at all? M- minimal. It does a little bit. Yeah. But only like on, I realistically, it's probably like two or three percent. Yeah. Okay. It's, yeah. Four fifths of fuck all. It's, yeah. It's it's definitely more electronics first and foremost yep um you can get a okay guitar and putting bitch and electronics in it and it's gonna sound pretty bloody good yep um it might not be 100 percent, but it's gonna be pretty bloody good yep so first and foremost a good electric electronics definitely um but then and and this is where high-end guitars like what we do um and you know, just in general guitar makers as such, as opposed to factories. Yeah. The, the general thing is you, you, we, we all use good electronics. We often all use the same stuff. Yep. But the difference is, okay, we, we're going to use really, really good quality timbers. We yep. really good quality construction. Yeah. Um, we're going to change a few specs and things to do really good quality finishes, which has an effect on sound as well. Yeah. Do stuff like that. And that's where you get the, the kind of final 5% of the difference between really good guitar and a bitching guitar yeah, is, yeah. is those little final percenters. So, but honestly, you could, you could get a $500 guitar, you get a $50 guitar and you could get a $10,000 guitar, put them all in a line. They all sound like guitars. Yeah. They all sound, you know, 80% of the way to a good sounding guitar. Yeah. And it's just those final bits. that. And does the other part come in longevity as well? Because, you know, you can have something uh, that's fantastic at the moment and mm. it'll be shit in a year and you can get another thing that might cost a little bit more and you don't see all the fucking ins and outs of why it costs more. But mm. then in 10 years, it's just as good as it was. Yeah. Then, you know, as the day yeah. you got it kind of fucking deal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. definitely. That that disposable side of it is definitely part of it. Um, a, a well-made guitar will last longer than you, yeah. really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so and that's that's part of what like a, a big thing for me actually is, is that is the longevity and stability and um the reliability of it yeah um i over engineer the shit out of a bunch of stuff on guitars because from a repairer's point of view like i've had to fix you've seen all the fucking like, problems <laughs> yeah exactly yeah um what's the most common like, problem shit guitar <laughs> no. yeah <laughs> um i don't know there's uh, there's lots of lots of it's maintenance like bowed necks and fucking yeah yeah lots of lots of twisted necks and stuff i mean honestly most necks you can adjust to yep. be okay yep. um the you you get the it's more stuff like fret work that's yep. that's an issue so um you can get a guitar that like the neck's generally pretty straight you can adjust it with a truss rod to get it pretty straight but that only adjusts a kind of a gradual curve it only adjusts the majority of the neck. It doesn't sit down and get individual fret sites. So things like getting really good fret work, stuff like that is, yep. is a big difference. And, and that's something that, that you never perfect. Like it's, you know, even the best guitar makers in the world are always getting better at stuff like that sure, all sure. the time. You don't so, just kind of hit it there and go, oh yeah, I've done it. I'm, I'm there. Are you doing, is a lot of this like hand tools? Everything is, yeah. Real yep. feel. Mm-hmm. This is like old school craft. This yeah, is, um, yeah. you know, it, it's, uh, I forget what I was watching. Uh, I was watching something the other day, and they were talking about um, uh, the the last guy that was this certain type of metal worker. Yeah, and yep. um, and he was retiring, and so he didn't have any apprentices. He didn't have anyone. Yep. He would basically had maintenance people that were just there to mm. fix machines and do stuff. And and the guy who ran the company is like. I don't know what when to do. When he goes, yeah. It, we're fucked. Yeah, yeah. We don't have anyone to do any of this and the machines can't do it as well. They can do it, but they can't do it as well. Yeah, yeah. And that was it. And and the old guy's like, yeah, fucking told you so. Yeah, <laughs> That was his yeah. kind of point of view on the whole thing and, and off it went. And it does seem like a lot of these kind of um, uh, what would have been a common trade or a more common mm-hmm. trade, you know, 100 years ago, 50 years ago, things like that. Yeah. We're just fallen by the wayside i mean we don't yeah. manufacture shit in our country anymore yeah um it seems amazing to me when i when i do think about like just car manufacture you think mm-hmm. car manufacturing yeah. the start like the, it's almost an artist it starts from nothing and yeah it, it does get is. built yeah yeah and uh, the fact that we could have done that for so many so many years mm. and just stop it 
like that just yeah. seems really, really wasteful to a lot of people's skills. Yeah, you know, absolutely. We have a huge yeah. amount of skills in this, but now we're just going to do nothing with it. Yes, yeah. the, it's the so skills, wasteful. the skill side of stuff like that is is crazy. Like it, I, I, I do stuff that I think is dead simple. Like yep. I, I honestly think what I do is is really simple. There are people out there who are doing phenomenal things trades wise and, and skills wise people people look at what i do and, and sometimes they're like man it's amazing you can just take a piece of timber and turn into that and i'm like you know I, that's that's it's not like i just cut that's a few things and send a few things that's fine yeah. but th- yeah there's a lot of trades like that that are you know th- it's funny i think as as an as a whole industries are changing in the sense that you know there are people that are like if, if you want a certain ring design you can go out and get a thousand of that made by a manufacturer who will make it more accurately yeah um more consistently uh cheaper and get it to you on time mm-hmm. that's that's great they're really good things but there are also there's a there's a value and a feel in getting something that's handmade by yeah. someone saying, I mean, you've got, I just saw on the way in here, you've got Teeps, the jeweler. Do you know who he is? No. Teeps, the jeweler, is in this building. He's fucking amazing. Yeah, right. Yeah, he's another young dude. Hit him up. He's a young dude yeah. who um, I think he's a, about my age. I think he's probably, yeah, like 26, 27, I think. Yep. He is phenomenal. He's he's a jeweler. Um, he makes some really cool shit. Yeah, right. Um, there are, there are, there of, are people everywhere doing are unique, everywhere wonderful doing things that are, are just, yeah. you know, just nooks and crannies yeah, doing their absolutely. own shit and, yeah. and, and yeah. making things happen. And, and, you know, that's it, it's one of those reasons why you want to do things like this and, and, mm. and speak to people about that because there is always that kind of story behind them. And and like I see people's trades and things a lot like um, the same as a musician. You, you know, a musician, you were saying before that uh, you'll, you'll never get um, frets exactly right how you'd love them and you'll always be something you work on i think it's the same yeah. as a musician just getting that yeah that right feel that right tone that right touch that yeah. all those yeah. things and putting it everything together and you can always go fuck i missed out on that one yeah absolutely I just missed that note or yeah. i just missed that highlight or fucking hell yeah. what the hell was i thinking i just fucked that whole fucking thing has, has anyone ever written a song and been like oh yep i wrote that song it's a perfect song i'm never gonna write a song again Kanye West. Yeah, he does it yeah. every time. That's because he's fucking amazing. Yeah, he does it every every like every yeah. week. He does it, but he redoes it over and over. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, there 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 are still plenty of people doing stuff like that. I mean, our trade, for example, there's more people doing it than there ever has been. Okay, it's so it, how many guitar makers or or I should say split them up. How many guitar makers are there in in Adelaide? In Adelaide, there are people who can do it. There's probably a dozen, I'd say. Yep. People who do do it um, in the world of electric guitars, there's pretty much just two of us who I think, like it, that's a it's a bit controversial to say that, but um, there's really only two of us that I think are actually doing it, and that's yep. because everyone is. There, a lot of people are guitar repairers who make a guitar once or twice a year yeah but they their, their brain is repairing guitars and every now and then someone will come in and they'll say I'm, i want you to make me a guitar and they'll go yeah what do you want and then they'll make it yeah but they're not really putting a lot of brain power and effort into being a guitar that's maker. not what's keeping them up at that's night that's not what's keeping them up at night yeah. they're not repairing during the day and then closing the door and then going back into the workshop and building guitars because that's what they want to do yeah um there's really only two of us who are doing that another guy called chris lau who's in mcgill who's an amazing guitar maker um he and i worked together when we we're all at fretco yeah um he left just a couple of years before me i think um and he he's an amazing guitar maker totally different to what i do yep um he's an electric guitar maker as well um but very different styles and um ideas and which is really cool because we get along really well yeah yeah um, and so you're not really competing for each, with each other at all no the more the more we, the more time we spend with each other the more we realize we're not competing yep. with each other i think um we just did the guitar festival the international guitar festival yep. um a couple of months ago i think now um we were the only electric guys there everyone else was classical so there's a bunch of classical makers in adelaide and a bunch okay. of steel stream makers we've got two of who i think are the some of the best guitar makers in the world are yep. in adelaide um doing classical stuff um but yeah chris and i were there together and and we've 
we were we were the only electric guys in amongst very much a classical world so we yep. stood out a lot um and my stuff particularly stood out like dog's balls because i've got these big multi-scale guitars with glowing the dark inlays and just multi-scale guitars are they like the fan fret fucking yeah. things holy yeah. shit man yeah. how the fuck do you play one of those things exactly like you play an old guitar really <laughs> yeah yeah oh, that's a lot of people look at it and they're like what the fuck is that it's is it tuned different I have different chords different what do i have to do how do i what play is, it yeah what's the dip that- you, just, you just get on with playing it it's totally the same it's it's um it's it's without getting right into the details of it it's basically combining two different scale lengths of a guitar the the length the scale length of a guitar affects the the tone the pitch um and the feel multi-scale allows you to have the advantages of a of a longer scale guitar with some of the advantages of a shorter scale guitar as far as feel and tone is concerned um so it and it's basically just kind of going oh i want i want something that's certain length length a and i want length b and i join the two together and you can kind of you can get it's way more complicated than that you can get yeah yeah very personal about it you can you can adjust it and twist and move it so if you look at almost everything i make they're all different angles each one um because they're all adjusted to the player and yeah right to and and that's where it really starts getting like really getting into the handmade territory when you do that kind of stuff because um is there a lot of math involved with that uh yes and no there's a little bit but there's a really really bitching website that allows me to punch in some oh, numbers how good's the internet <laughs> yeah <laughs> how fucking right. good is the internet there's this free website that I, I don't know this dude made years ago and like anyone who makes multi-scale guitars uses this website to yeah. calculate their fret positioning that's awesome and i don't know who this dude is and it's just up there for free for anyone thanks hey, that seriously dude. he has revolutionized the industry yeah yeah Because without that website the first one i did i sat down and worked it out manually yeah and fuck that was hard oh, <laughs> it, i was looking at some some of the pictures that you were doing and i was like man i've got to ask him about those fan fret yeah. guitars and then i you were calling them multi-scale guitars i'm like yeah is that what they're actually called it's the, same, it's the exact same thing fan fret multi-scale. holy yeah. shit it, it just those things look fucking crazy man they, that's, absolutely crazy it's one of the things like it, it, it's so superficial but it's one of the things that makes me want to do it and one of the things that um that made me want to do multi-scale in the first place was that when i first started doing it it's really it's really popular now yeah um but when i first started getting into it there's only a few people who were doing it. there were no manufacturers doing it there was only small handmade makers doing it yeah um and I was like desperately wanting to make some multi-scale guitars where I was at, where I was formerly employed. I was like nipping at the heels of the boss. I'm like, we got to do this. We got to do this. Trust me in yeah. like in five years time, this is going to be the thing. It's fucking awesome. And he was like, ah, I'm still trying to reinvent the wheel. Why are you doing that? It's all crooked. And, and I was like, all right, whatever. I'm going to go make someone on the side anyway. And I did. And lo and behold, like I personally haven't changed the industry, but man, yeah. they've gone fucking nuts. Yeah, Everyone yeah. wants multi-scale. It's, I remember first seeing one a few years ago and um, I think it was uh, it was a, a acoustic guitar that a dude mm-hmm. in Victoria made and yeah. um, I was like fuck me man what the hell is going on here it's and then I seen disgusting. the guy just yeah. playing it and yeah. it, it, was, it was amazing it sounds it blew phenomenal. my mind it really yeah. sounds absolutely amazing um but yeah, yeah, well, yeah, well, saying one of the reasons why I wanted to, well, I persisted with it was just the fact that it looks fucking cool. Oh yeah, and like that, that is like every single luthier is just rolling over in their grave right now saying that. But it looks fucking cool. <laughs> the amount of people that came out to my stand when we were at the um, the guitar festival who just came out went, "What is that?" Yeah, and that was the thing that draw that draws them in straight away. That's like the guitar, the electric guitar industry is like. It's like seventy five percent fashion industry and then twenty five percent guitar making. Yep, and that's just straight away catches your eye. It looks crazy. It looks custom. I yeah. I, I think the whole world is is changing to that, mm-hmm. and and it is like probably even more than that. You know, it, what we look at and the way that we look is all we give a fuck mm-hmm. about, and yeah. it's not anything new. It's just we make it really really available and we're yeah. really good at it. Yeah, we've we've got. Instagram and we got Facebook and we yeah. got Twitter and we got all these things that we're able to share this shit on yeah. and it's always immediate so mm-hmm. everyone is so vain or it may be not more vain than what we used to be but just more conscious of it I yeah. think and and why wouldn't if you're if you're making a business why the fuck wouldn't you recognize yeah. that and go with that instead exactly. of yeah. sitting on your heels and going well actually traditionally yeah we don't need to do any 
any of that. Exactly. Wah, 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 wah. Exactly. Yeah. Fuck yeah. You, yeah. Dude. It's all, it's <laughs> just visual. It makes no difference. It makes to absolutely no difference. So we're going to continue on as we did. Yeah. And then they shut down the fucking car plant, man. We should have made better cars yeah. years ago. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I, I hate people. Fuckers. The man. The, the people in the who I hate the most in the world are people who go. This is the way we've always done it. This is the way we're going to keep yep. doing it. And yep. it's like there's just. Uh, how do you expect the world to evolve? Yeah. <laughs> You're the same dude who's complaining about why you haven't got any business. You're the yeah. same dude who's like, you know, like, why I, I only want to make this type of guitar, That's, but yeah, no it, one wants to it, come to me. It's because you only want to make that type of guitar. It is so <laughs> funny that people do that and um, they they really do just hold on to that. Yeah. I, I don't... Uh, it, Get bitter. Nostalgic. And- um, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. So bitter. Yeah, it is. A, it's go, a nostalgic thing. Why yeah. won't people come to me anymore? Yeah. I'm doing the same thing that I've always done, and those people yeah. came to me. Exactly. So that says that they should still come to me. Exactly. It's like, no, man, because people change. Yeah. People move on. You need to evolve. People fucking die. Yeah. Like if you if you've been doing something for forty years, yeah, half your client base is dead. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like that's that's if if you're if you're working if you're a motorbike mechanic and you've you've been doing it for forty years, the dudes who were going to you forty years ago aren't riding bikes anymore. Yeah. And if you if you're only repairing the same style of bike or you can't work on a, a on a modern type of bike and you're like that's it's stupid tech it shouldn't be doing it anyway I'm only yep. going to do this. Yeah. You were literally you're just closing the door on so oh, much potential. Absolutely, business. and you, and you get that you get that crossover of you know where two worlds collide and and uh you get people that don't know any of the old school stuff yeah and they go well i don't need to yeah because we're we're moving on yeah and then you get the old people that that go you know what i don't know anything about that new shit and i'm yeah. not going to do it just get, just leave me with the old stuff yeah my like, guys we all need to be a bit flexible yeah it's a good idea if you did know about some of that old if shit know and then you know yeah. why you've got this new stuff exactly you know exactly. that gives you a better yeah. rounded point of view of why that we're at this stage now and, yeah. and not just fucking we didn't magic here it exactly. didn't happen we didn't actually we didn't we nobody walked out of a cave yeah exactly, it, it, exactly. nothing happened like step that. out of the water and become people <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 and, yes. and it's i think right now it, um and, and it might just be my industry i don't know but there's it's a, it's really interesting where because because of the net it's so accessible to learn about stuff yeah um it's so easy to become an expert it's so easy to learn to be a guitar maker for example that you don't learn all the background of why yeah um so there's there's a new generation. So I'm saying there's there's more guitar makers now than there ever there, I think there ever has been. Yep. And there definitely is, and there's more people making amazing guitars than there ever has been. Like the the caliber of of handmade guitars right now is fucking high. Yeah, it's really good. It's really good stuff getting made. Um, and even you, you dudes who are who are making in a garage, they're still making sick guitars. Yeah, like they're they're good. Um, but the difference is there's a lot of those guys and you know maybe they don't need to know but they don't necessarily have the background of of repairing and setting up yeah. 20,000 guitars they haven't had to refret a bunch of guitars they haven't had to put together guitars that got driven over by a truck they ha- don't have all that kind of shit to do which ha- it puts you where you are now and I think I like, that's the the thing that um, the differentiates me from other people my age in the industry is because there are plenty of people my age in the industry who are making amazing guitars but my background is from is from fixing broken shit yeah. and is is from improving things as opposed to just going I want to make this product here I'm going to make this product here I'm like okay I'm going to make this product here but I'm going to change all these things because I've learned that in, over the last decade, guitars keep coming back with this problem. Or, yeah, yeah. Um, and like you, know. you say, like you you over engineer some parts because yeah, you yeah. know that yeah, exactly. man, this is going to get treated like this. This is going to happen. Exactly. And fucking blah blah yeah. blah. And and yeah. fuck that. I don't want to have to deal with that anymore. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got some pretty well renowned guitar makers or guitar mm-hmm. brands out of Australia. Yeah. And. Um, one, you know, I was thinking of fucking you get just general guitar stuff earlier today, and I was like, uh, you know, if if I was in your shoes and and I was a young guy wanting to make guitars, wanting to make a, an impact in the industry or something like that, I would have probably looked along the lines of like, how do I get a job at Mayton? How do mm-hmm. I get a job at Cole Clark? Yeah. And then I thought, Cole Clark and Mayton, they kind of 
grew out of or Cole Clark kind of grew out of Mayton or yeah. something yeah. like that and, and, yeah. and whatnot. Is, is, is that a normal thing in, in the kind of in a, in a small industry like that for, um, for people to, to grow apart and um, yeah, yeah. become competitors, I guess, as those two have? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, think it, I think it is in any industry, really. Yeah. I mean, yeah, especially like long-term names, I think it is. Yeah, like it, yeah. You look at, like as in a hot rod world, you've got Chip Foose who came from making some of the best wheels who came from boy coddington yep direct competitors you, you grow up somewhere you learn some stuff and you might stay with that company and you might just go off and do your own thing yep. here in adelaide for example freco where i used to work is kind of known as this like breeding ground for a lot of other people yep. because there's basically like there's there's three of us now who are who, who've left there in the last few years but regardless of that uh we all went through there. We were there for a long time yep. and then all split off and did our own thing. Yeah. Theoretically, we're, we're competitors um, and in some parts of the business, definitely competitors. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't think it's um, it's unhealthy. Competition does help know? as well. Competition helps. I, I love I love competition. Like with, with Chris, for example, I love the competition we have in the sense that it it strives for greatness it pushes yeah. you to to be good it's a positive competition yeah. not a uh, fucking i'm gonna go burn that dude's workshop exactly <laughs> exactly yeah it's not yet but it's <laughs> no nah, it's a really Man, i hope there's good. no fire at his fucking workshop yeah. <laughs> fuck i hope there's not <laughs> or mine yeah, um, yeah true true <laughs> so much good timber out there <laughs> what's your favorite timber to use oh shit i knew you were gonna ask that um i don't know man good stuff stuff that's are Australian timbers good? Um, there are some good Australian timbers. Yeah. Um, Tasmanian Blackwood is sick. It's yeah. fucking rad, man. Yeah. It looks amazing. You get some nice fiddle back bits of Blackwood and it just fucking looks crazy good. Yeah. Uh, it sounds wicked. Yeah. It's 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 really nice to work. Um, yeah. There's, there's, that's probably my favorite Australian timber. Yeah. yeah. I've done, I did a really nice... Um, Red gum tall guitar last year for a mate of mine. Um, that came up really killer. But the, I, I, I'm trying to use more Australian stuff. Yep. And I'm trying to import less and trying to buy local timber as much as I can. It's yep. really, really hard in Adelaide because there's like this one place that you can buy timber. And you, and even then it's like you can go pick out your timber, but I, they've got no fucking idea where it came from. Yeah, guarantee okay. it yeah there's no way that i can go like cool did you guys get did you sustainably source it? so it, it's pretty hard in australia to do that um i think especially on our level like yep. if you're buying um you know if, if you're buying pallet loads you can consciously go out and go all right i want want to make sure that this is fsc certified and that it's it, it you know it's it's is, is that the, right the way. sustainability stuff? Yeah, that's yeah. that's that's basically um, you this know this isn't from the Amazonian fucking exactly. rainforest stuff and yeah, yep. exactly, yeah, yeah. So it was it was cut down legally, um, and it was treated correctly. There was yep. no one was harmed, no animals were harmed, no habitats were harmed, um, and no one was exploited. Yeah, because that's a massive part of the industry. I was just just the other day I was watching a video. Um, by a I think Swedish guitar maker who um, was talking about the exploitation of the industry because it's a massive part of it it's like with any manufacturing yeah. there's massive parts of exploitation whether it's the making of the guitar or where the timbers came from yeah. stuff like that They're, there's a huge I mean like there's guitars out there that are brand new are like 200 bucks and it's like yeah. how the fuck how the is something fuck made you humanely yeah. it's not no no that's exactly <laughs> that's right it's it, like, it is amazing like the sum of the sum of materials mm. should be worth more than what that product is how the fuck does yeah. that come about how a single pickup on my guitar is worth more than than those entire guitars yep. and that's not because I'm using some phenomenal pickup that's made out of fucking solid gold yeah that's just a good pickup what makes a good like, pickup oh that's a whole nother fucking world man 
Yeah. Is yeah. It, is that like oh, the sorcery? That's, yeah, that's the, the actual sorcery. Yeah. Is it all like? Is it? Is it like? Because uh, oh, sorcery, electronics, and sorcery go together quite yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. But like you know, it's just a, a a stator or a, you know a generator, and just you know we need this many windings on this many poles to do this yeah. and this and this. Like, how the fuck did you work that out? Yeah. You goddamn fucking shoot him. Yeah, and then yeah, See pick if up, he can swim or fucking pick drowns. Up, <laughs> pick up's a crazy man. There's like there's there's a kind of like a half a dozen pick up geniuses that have been kicking around for a long time and yep. and you go out to them and, and not that I do but you, you can go out to them and say I, I, oh, okay you do this pick up that has this amazing sound but I want you to increase this frequency decrease this and make it have more output and do blah and they're like oh yeah I reckon if I just like change this thing here and you're like man it's, it's a fucking magnet <laughs> and a bit of copper wire yeah how did you do that yeah, <laughs> it's crazy yeah. it's very crazy um and even even the guys who are making all the crazy pickups are, st- are still even there they're still just like pickups do weird stuff it's yep. it like there's so many different variables like, you know it comes down to like the tension that it's the pickups being wound on how thick is the coating on the wires that are thinner than your fucking hair anyway yeah how long they're on there and like the, the the dimensions of everything the screws are they are they flat or are they beveled have they got a flat head on the top of them or have they got an allen key on top of them? all that shit is how that all effect. makes a difference yeah, yeah it's fucking insane man it's crazy so i pickups like i've made a couple of pickups and I, I built a pickup winder out of an old sewing machine that was fun as you do yeah as you do apparently that's what what you do so i did uh, <laughs> and that was really cool it was fucking scary though yeah and like the pedal on it didn't work properly it would be like really slow and then just like take off <laughs> And you imagine just what a sewing boost. machine on, but with like a pickup stuck on the, the flywheel bit of it, and cables are like just flying around. It's, it's fucking wicked. Um, yeah, so I made a couple of pickups, but I have no fucking idea what I'm doing. Like, yeah. and I still, still now, like I, I'll help talk to customers about like, choosing electronics for their guitars and stuff. But I'm, I'm not like, oh, you should go get this guitar, this pickup, because it's, you know, got this certain kind of all blah. this technical information and all yeah. this. And I'm just like, that's a sick pickup. That's the one you should get. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's important though, because you do find some people that do tend to overdo the fucking, mm-hmm. like overthink it. Mm-hmm. And you know, you, you don't need, like, why do you need to know that information? I don't need oh, it Because I, I read this other thing that said that this one had 820 mm. and this one's got 825. So that's yeah. five better. No, yeah. fucking fuck I don't off. need to know that shit, man. Yeah, but exactly. Good. This one's good. This one's yeah. not as good this one's shit yeah make your choice <laughs> yeah if i spend all that time i like, going over that shit i'm never gonna fucking build guitars no i'm no. never gonna finish anything and there's a couple of guys i know who are like that and they they know fucking everything yeah but they don't actually know or utilize anything yeah and beca- because they, they know all the details and they know every product and this and they and they know every technique of this and the history of that and and yeah, you like they're not fucking making anything. They're yeah. not. They're not. Pra- I, I'm. I'm totally opposite of that. Like I've got. I say this to people all the time, and people know me know exactly this. I've got like the most brutal cutthroat filter in my brain, where I'm just like, is this practical? Like, can I use this information? Is it going to help me? And is it? Is, am I going to solve a problem with it? Yeah, yeah, sweet. I'll keep it. If not, I don't give a fuck. Like yeah. I don't remember. I barely remember people's names. I don't remember like birth dates. <laughs> I don't remember anything like that and it's not because I'm an arsehole I'm just a I've just got this fucking brutal filter and yeah. it's and it's the same with information with stuff like that I'd love to know more about guitar pickups but I, I right now I don't need to yeah I, that's the reality of it yeah I'm you not need to know maker. more about fucking yeah. running your business and making the yeah guitars exactly and making yeah. sure customers come in and, exactly. and leave happy and mm-hmm. and so how how did you find that challenge of um you know it's it's funny sometimes when you work for someone and you kind of do everything in the business and that and you know how to run the business and you know all of that shit but it's not your business mm. and then when you do go out and you do it's fucking scary as yeah. shit yeah like there isn't anyone to ask there's no backup there's no sorry i fucked this up and walking away yeah none of that it's all yours how yeah. how, how did you find that transition um yeah i i don't think i struggled with it in the um responsibility sense of it like I, I, I was doing everything when I was there anyway. I was yep. like basically running, I was doing like almost everything in the workshop uh, as part from the setup kind of side of things and, and general maintenance. I, I did still do bits of that, but I was as, as far as kind of the back end of the workshop, 
I was doing pretty much all the paint work and, and a lot of the repairs and restoration and, um, you know, woodworking and, and all sorts. I was just getting thrown everything. So yep. as far as skills, I was fine. It, it, I, I didn't... It was, it was hard going from having a workshop that you're familiar with and having all the tools and um, it's not just tools, literally tools, but, you know, the tools of connections and tools of... Yep. Um, literally how is this laid out in the workshop I spent the first and I still do it now definitely all the time but I spent the first probably 18 months like every day I'm like fuck I don't have that thing like shit I need to go out and buy that thing fuck I don't have that thing I gotta buy that thing shit I have to buy that off the net and I was just spending so much money on just getting all these things that you're like oh I've I've got I've got myself set up and I I had a pretty good setup by the time I went and did my own thing I definitely did but I still was missing so much. Oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> so and and so that was really hard. But yeah, the the other side of it, the business side of it, like because I, I knew my way around pretty well doing everything. I knew everything was going in and out. I, I understood that, which is part of the reason why I decided to do my own business because I saw it all that. But it was it was really hard when it was like, you know, when you when you when you're running your own business, you can get all that stuff, but that doesn't mean that you're paying the bills at the end of the day. If you understand yeah, all yeah. that stuff, that doesn't mean that. Um, you know, it, it's all of a sudden it's really shit scary when you've got no guitars to set up or yep. something like that. You know, the, you you go when I first first opened when I was back in John Reynolds. The first couple of days, I had a bunch of guitars come in. I was like, "Fuck yeah!" Made a couple of hundred bucks in the first day or two. That is sick. It's only going to get better than that. And the first week was rad, and then like week two came along and kind of quietened down a little bit and I was like oh, that's okay as usual and then it kind of came up and down and then a month into it I'm like fuck I've got no fucking money <laughs> yeah I've got no fucking money whatsoever and you know why, why is this where's this coming from and you're like oh, okay that's all right it'll, it's only a temporary problem it'll come back next week yeah yeah I'm like actually shit I'm not just gonna get paid next week no I'm not gonna get paid next week <laughs> if I don't go it's out it's not gonna and get magic that. itself <laughs> yeah it doesn't it doesn't happen you've like okay if I want to get paid next week then I need to make that money a month ago yeah you know that's you've got to be just pushing and pushing and pushing and yeah and that took a bit to um to really not the not the like to work for it you know I, I, I used to work really hard when i was there i did lots and lots of hours and um i've never had a problem with working hard enough that's yep. not been a problem but but yeah it, it was hard to to all of a sudden to try and convert working hard into um paying bills yeah because the two don't just you like I think there's sometimes a bit of a, it doesn't marry up does it it doesn't marry it, up no it, it, it doesn't it, it, that's, that's, it, these are the reasons why I think that what we're teaching kids at school and you know it, as simple as um, as uh, not scoring at the football like mm. fuck off it's a game we've we've got games and we have games just like any other fucking time in 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 our existence we do these things is training ourselves and yeah. it's why we're competitive and it's how we keep on top of it and it's why we train and why we do it. if we take that away when people get to the real world it, they think well I worked really hard so I yeah. get I get that yeah well, no you don't you can work as hard as you fucking want it doesn't mean it you doesn't, always get the results no so you, you, it's important to no. keep score and it's important to lose it's yeah. important to win it's important to know why and how and mm-hmm. and uh, it, it's 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 frustrating that sometimes that you meet people that don't really kind of get that yeah that um the importance about fucking yeah. putting in that effort and you know just because you did it man doesn't mean doesn't it's mean always going to work out and be roses nah. for you no nah, exactly yeah like deserving like you don't deserving, just deserve yeah. it you know yeah. like it, it and even if you do deserve it doesn't mean you're going to get it like it's yeah yeah I, I've from the you look at the hours that I've worked I should be a fucking millionaire yeah <laughs> I yeah. really should be a millionaire <laughs> but that, and and that's okay like I'm cool with not having that i don't i don't do this for money yeah. um and and that's not saying i don't do this for money because you know i'm comfortable i'm happy because i'm not i work really fucking hard I make, yeah it's I always nice to have money. some more money <laughs> <laughs> you know like i definitely need to make more money yeah. um but it's but at the same time i'm okay with the fact that i work if i do work 100 hours in a week i'm okay with the fact that i'm not going to get paid 100 hours worth of yep. income you know yeah yeah that's okay and that's and that's all part of running a business and that's part of it's part, it's part of, of being doing, self-employed it's part it's of being part of self-employed life. exactly it's it's just it's just part of life and i think a lot of people um 
don't understand that and they expect that if they're doing certain hours that they should get paid for those certain hours and that they if they're not then something's wrong and yeah that's not necessarily the case no you know? no it's not it's it's uh, yeah in some jobs that may be the case but definitely owning your own business isn't it's one not. of those isn't it's one of not. those things yeah so yeah. do you do you find and and one of the one of the big changes i guess in in um, adelaide and music and whatnot um in the last kind of five years especially is that like nobody fucking comes here anymore yeah, yeah. It's do, a, do you find that to be yeah. a um, discouraging kind of thing for music in general in, in South Australia? Or do you find that, that there's resistance against that and it's in, encouraging people to go, fuck you, we're going to do our own thing? Or Yeah, yeah. there's definitely that. Yeah. Yeah. We do get skips a lot and it's... And it's not really because people don't go to shows. It's, it's because there's this shitty attitude in Adelaide where people... People don't take themselves seriously. Everyone's like, oh, fucking Adelaide is so boring. And everyone's just like, and, and they're the exact same people who are complaining about nothing coming to Adelaide. And, yeah. and they're not making any effort to actually make Adelaide cool. Yeah. They're, not, they're not, you know, it's, so I think um, we do definitely get skipped a lot by a lot of big acts. And that's because we're not selling tickets. We're not selling pre-sale tickets. Yeah. That's, that's a big thing in Adelaide is like heaps of people just rock up at last minute. Yeah. Um, and that can be okay for we're a the small big, show. Yeah, we're the big country town. We're the big know? country town where you just don't plan to, you just go out to a gig. Yeah. And even if you are planning on going to a gig, you, you don't buy a ticket. You just, you just like, you yeah, I'm going to go to that gig. Yeah. Yeah. So, and because of that, we, we do have really good successful gigs, but we've got promoters who are just like, I've got a 600 capacity venue and I've sold 50 tickets. Yeah. And that's happened to me the last three times. And two out of those three shows have been sick at the end of it, but that other one wasn't and I can't fucking risk it. Yeah. So, you know, if it's going to cost me 15 grand to get a band there and I'm going to sell 50 pre-sale tickets, it's, I'm not going to do it. Doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's just it? too, it's too much of a gamble. So I think that's the big problem with that. Ladies doing that. Um, yep. And it's, it's hard. Like you can't just wake up one day and be like, buy more tickets guys you know it's True. it's a cultural thing and it's 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 about that whole casual attitude that we have but we still we have a really good live scene we yep. we have shit loads of good gigs on what do you think our live scene reflects best like what type of music do you think's reflected best in adelaide um i think probably the heavier scene yeah the heavy and, and the kind of like hardcore kind of stuff there's like there's there's shit loads of metal bands there's shit loads of hardcore bands um she loads of kind of post hardcore stuff that's uh, like we, we've got a really good heritage of, of metal in yep. Adelaide yeah um, you know I'm, it, it might be a bit biased because I'm in that scene and you know I go to bucket loads of those gigs and listen to those bands and <laughs> hang out with those dudes and play in those bands but uh, I think um, yeah we've got a really good heavy scene like, yeah. and any, anyone who from interstate who comes over here is is like pretty much anyone and everyone's like you guys have got a fucking rad hardcore scene and you know we've got metal nightclubs that's fucking yeah, yeah, killer yeah and stuff like that and we've got successful metal nightclubs yeah we know? do like yeah. it's 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 not a flash in the pan thing it's stuff that's been around for a long been around time for 20 years and it's yeah. still fucking kicking kicking on you know yeah 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 that's yeah. exactly right how, how do you think um fowlers well are they still going to play live music like i saw a thing that said they they're not and now they are and fowlers hands and well so fowlers i think like fowlers the entity has lost the contract for that venue right the line art center but um someone else has taken over now well we'll take it over i don't know when that is i think it's probably started next year something yeah. like that um and they, it's apparently the dude who helped to re reno West Oak, which was World's End. Okay. Um, and um, also, the, I think the dude who does Laneway. Yep, I think yep. They think those guys are taking it over, which is killer yeah. because that's live music. So yep, yep. awesome. Um, so I don't think it's the death of live music as a, as a venue. I think yeah, it would change. Well, that's good. Yeah. Excuse me. I, th- I think it would just change. So um, it'll be less metal orientated. It'll be just touring bands more rock pop stuff coming through yeah um which is fine because I, I don't i guess there are some other i was gonna say there aren't really too many venues that kind of capacity for bands like that yeah um you know it's mostly heavy bands playing those kind of venues in adelaide there's there's lots of little venues and then it's just like boom you're at the gov yeah there's not a lot in between so yeah um, yeah i mean i mean the gov yeah. is still the kind of the uh it, is it the premier 
live music venue in in Adelaide, the Gov. Yeah, it's that and HQ. I think yeah. uh, like so many people, like you say, HQ is a venue, a really good venue, and people are like, what? Like, yeah, HQ. HQ is a fucking amazing venue. Yeah, it's just a shit nightclub most it's of the time. Just a shit nightclub. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's just full of lots of fucking meatheads. <laughs> yeah, but when it's a venue, it's killer. Like some of my favorite shows I've ever been to. Yeah, I've been there, and they say, it looks amazing and sounds amazing. So, um, but I think yeah, I think the Gov is still the kind of quintessential, like. You play at the Gov and tick that off the list, kind of thing. Yeah, because yeah. like there's there's people who play there who, like some of my idols I've seen there, but I've played there. It's this really unique venue that's yeah. like, um, it's achievable. It's it really is achievable for a local band to play at the Gov, but you'll also have these massive international bands come through there. Is it because uh, there's not much? There's not too many pubs left putting on live music around Adelaide anymore I mean I know the Cranker do their live music um, I know that um, uh, Exeter have some live music sometimes yeah. I don't think the Austral do anything anymore yeah they just do acoustic stuff a little yeah, bit okay. of that yeah, yeah. and uh, Producers is gone yeah. Um, you know, Seven Stars, they've long gone from, mm-hmm. from having any, any music at, at, at that pub. It's, it's, it's a changing kind of scene and it, it, does, um, it does fucking piss me off sometimes that you can't go into town and just go rock up at a pub and have some beers and see bands like yeah. you kind of used to. It's, yeah. it's, I think the Cranker have stepped up in the last couple of years. I think they changed owners or something like that yeah. and stepped it up a bit and, and now are uh, rejuvenating some of like, you know, their 20 years, 30 years ago kind of heyday. Yeah, um, yeah. Do, do you think that's something that will continue? Do you think that there's like room for that and, and room yeah. for, for that to grow in Adelaide? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think I think it, it, right now it's, it's probably made a bit more of a comeback than it did like 10 years ago. 10 years ago, it was like there was a massive uproar about there not being enough live music. Yeah. And that was because all of a sudden there was like, you know, the whole Pokies thing came in and, yeah. and Pokies came in, live music went out. Yeah, um, yeah. And that happened and that was just this massive shock. Now there's being a little bit of more of a turn. There's there's lots of acoustic acts, there's lots of small live music, um, there's lots of cover band stuff. Heaps of people are like, Oh, it's not the same, there aren't original bands. There's you know, you used to be able to go to the place like the Tivoli and go see original bands and yeah. stuff. It yeah, in, in a way there isn't that kind of thing happening, but there is still lots of live music. There's still people playing music, there's still dudes yeah. with guitars, there's still people with um getting out there with drum kits there's 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 even i i don't it's, it's a bit divided but even there's dudes out there with playing records a lot of people are like oh it's it's not it's not the same thing but it's still a dude they're pulling out playing records there's a guy yeah. playing that music for you it's it's not the end of the world just it's, because it's, it's yeah you know, I, I think it's where people need to be ex- uh, un, un, maybe not acceptable but just to open to experience different kind of yeah. atmospheres and stuff like yeah. that as well is i mean you're you're obviously metal um is do you have any, any other types of music that you really enjoy or is it heaps yeah heaps yeah. What, what what else what's what's the I, I total get, opposite of, of i'm like super dynamic i i I'm, I'm a massive folk fan I'm like okay. I love folk I love a lot of electronica stuff electronica is probably the only thing I don't really like go see yeah um, and that's just because I don't necessarily want to hang around a bunch of people tripping balls so. yeah <laughs> but <laughs> unless it's me uh, but like yeah I I think like yeah I, I, I see heaps of different music I, I love a lot of different music yeah my shop's heaps weird you'll like you'll walk up in the morning and I'll be like playing Lamb of God and then after that I'll be like yeah I'm gonna listen to Kings of Leon for a week straight and then <laughs> after that I'll just be listening to some the Turkish Carpenters. classical player and then Carpenters <laughs> or something you know the only only genre that I don't really listen to is like 70s and 80s Aussie rock yeah right I don't like hearing fucking Jimmy Barnes go ah! for 45 minutes yeah man I was fucking I had this class and this kid thought it was funny that um that he was he was going to show us the uh, uh, Jimmy Barnes screaming for no reason for forty five seconds. That was just an album, wasn't it? Or uh, just oh, a song. Well, no, it's a, it's a YouTube <laughs> fucking hit, man. You yeah. can look it up, and it's just Jimmy Barnes standing there fucking screaming. I'm like, what? Did, why are you doing this to us? Stop it! Turn it off and turn around again. And he's fucking playing it again. And <laughs> what the fuck is your fascination with this? He's like, it's just funny. Look at it, and it's just Jimmy Barnes, man. Leave it alone. <laughs> like, I I can respect some of that stuff. Like. Um, you know, and especially back in the day, and, and where they came from with that stuff, and like Absolutely. the, the yeah. history of it and whatnot. But I, I, I think um, sometimes, yeah, it's uh, 
I don't know, it's just got a certain stigma, doesn't it? It's like, it's end of the night music. It's yeah. Like, right, time to go. Yeah, exactly. All right, they're yeah. playing fucking chisel and shit's exactly. getting fucking rowdy, yeah. man. Wonderwall's on, everyone has to Yeah, leave. nothing good is going to happen <laughs> yeah, from now exactly. on. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I pretty much only enjoy that kind of stuff when I'm back in the hills at the local getting pissed with some mates. Yeah. Only the time I ever enjoy it. Yeah. The rest of the time I'm like, this is shit. This is shit music. <laughs> and I, and what about mumble rap? What about the uh, new mumble yeah, rap and all yeah, that that's, kind of that's stuff? Yeah, that's not something... Yeah, I don't, I don't really get into... Or even like... I don't even get exposed to that. Like yeah, I, right. Because I don't, I don't really... Like the only time I listen to radio is like Triple J on the way into the yeah. ship sometimes. Yeah. Um, and so I, I don't listen to really like any commercial radio or anything. So I don't, I don't get exposed to any of that. I, I don't... Um, See, I got exposed to all of, to all of that kind of stuff through BMX, and, yeah, um, and you know, watching mumble BMX rap through stuff BMX. And, yeah, man, really? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, like, what happens to like BMX videos being like Mill and Colin and shit like that? Well, there is still that side <laughs> as well, but it's um, you know, that side was fifteen years ago. So, yeah, like, true. all this kind of new now stuff I'm is all about boy. fucking bass really boost, fucking mumble, <laughs> mumble rap, fucking crazy yeah. shit, and. And it was um, watching some interviews and shit that was like predominantly BMX stuff. And then there was a few like this dude started doing hip hop people and watching some of that stuff. It was just crazy stories, man. It's just, what the fuck? This dude, I could never experience that kind of thing in my whole life. So I listened to some music and I was like, Mm, this isn't that bad and, and, and it's weird man I would have never thought that I would fucking enjoy yeah. it but I, I sit there and that's pretty much all I've been listening to for the last fucking 12 months or 18 months or yeah. something like that and and you know I've got mates of mine that, that I worked with in motorbike industry and stuff that are you know a bit older than me and they are just flat out fucking old school metal fucking yeah. old school Aussie rock and all that shit like what the hell are you listening yeah. to man you can't be listening to this shit this is just crap and it's like you are an angry old man yeah <laughs> exactly yeah yeah old man yells at cloud <laughs> yeah yeah exactly right yeah, but yeah the thing it is that, odd one that um that really surprises lots of people that i listen to is kanye I'm yeah, a yeah massive yeah. kanye yeah. fan so so massive kanye fan so you would know little pump then yeah yeah so uh, little pump i started yeah. listening to little pump yeah <laughs> there's a 15 year old who calls himself little, little jet pump. ski little well, anyone who's little anything yeah <laughs> yeah Can't. it's fucking weird man Can't be serious how are you so fucking rich that's the thing that no I shit wonder. i was just watching instagram and him and his mate just trying to do backflips on a fucking on a trampoline they're terrible they're yeah. shit but they're kids yeah. It's fucking hilarious. Like, this dude's worth millions and millions, millions. of dollars. Yeah. He's just been on Saturday Night Live doing a fucking gig with Kanye. Yeah. He's got the fucking, like, number one songs in the world. Yeah. <laughs> He's just struggling to do a backflip like yeah. any other kid, man. It's I can do that. fucking hilarious. Suck it. Yeah, I used to <laughs> I can do a backflip and you can't. <laughs> Suck it. <laughs> so, so, where do you hope that all of this um, guitar making and, and whatnot takes you? Do, do you want to expand the business? Do you want to uh, improve? employ people to to teach and become your apprentice you know like what 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 do you have dream wise yeah I'd, I'd love to yeah definitely want to expand i don't have dreams of like a factory or manufacturing in that sense i i def, i love making guitars and that's just what i want to do keep yeah. making guitars um definitely you know things you want to streamline and, and make it more efficient um but yeah I, I just want to keep making guitars that's the main thing but yeah i i, I love i love teaching people um yeah. I've never done a course thing or like I've never actually had form formally t- taught people anything. Yeah. I'd love to. And I think I'd probably be pretty good at it. Um, but this is like time and logistics. I just haven't done it yet. Yeah. But yeah, I, lo- I, lo- I have friends like come through the workshop and um, friends, kids come through the workshop and do work experience and hang out and, and teaching them stuff. And it's, it's really good fun. I like, I, I there's something, um, something educating about teaching other people things you yeah. know you've got to reaffirm it in your own mind before yeah, you tell someone you to do something yeah it over it again yeah. doesn't it you know you find yourself telling someone to do something and then you're like oh why do we do it that way and yep. people you know a student can well and truly turn around and be like oh, that's that's stupid you should be doing it this way and like <laughs> you're right yeah, yeah it yeah. totally could be yeah. you know um, so I, I think education is really cool I really like that yep. um, and that's something I would like to do I'd like to have I think I'd, I'd, I like the idea of having an apprentice, but I don't necessarily like a long-term apprentice. I like yep. the idea of someone just kind of coming for like six months and learning some like cool shit. traineeship length. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. Um, because 
I mean, inevitably, I'm going to need more people in the business apart from me yep. because logistically, if I keep getting more and more orders, I just can't. Make yeah, it. yeah. Um, but you know, that's where it helps. M, my partner, she's amazing. She's really helpful. She, um, she doesn't have any. Um, like training as far as like timber work or anything like that um but she's super switched on she's um she runs her own business as well and yep. it's so she she gets it yeah yeah um she gets me and so she can talk to my customers about Qatar or like not honestly not even really about Qatar's but she can talk to my customers and and book stuff in and, and have conversations that no one else could yeah even people who who i've worked with for five ten years people want to work with people and people want exactly. to deal with it's people, people. You know? it's so much about people yeah. so um you know it, it, like having her part of the business is, is definitely a big thing and, and having her um you know in the future if if i start getting bigger and bigger and bigger and like she'd be the first person i'd be like you're coming to work properly you're coming to work properly with yeah. me um because she's the only one who gets it like yep. she's just yeah and and she can she's very helpful with the workshop as well like i often give her little bits and tasks and, and she's she's really good with her hands she's creative so if she so plays her cards right she could be your first she could, trainee she could be my first trainee fucking hell yeah. <laughs> she doesn't really like being told what to do but <laughs> oh, small issue with small that. issue but, <laughs> don't worry about that you'll get yeah, over that we'll bit. get over that um so you start paying her then she'll yeah 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 but, but we like we we both because she runs her own business and 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 what, what so does she do? She's a henna artist and, okay. and visual artist. So yep. she, she does lots of different types of artwork. And um, so, yeah, I help her out with that. She helps me out. I mean, yep. for example, this weekend we're going to Mount Gambia. She should be doing henna down there for the weekend. It's like the closest thing we get to a holiday pretty much. Yeah, I, Mount Gambia's got some bands out of fucking Mount Gambia. There are. There's some sick bands. Always there. been some good bands out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. We were meant to be playing there in my band. I was going to play there like... Shit, we'd be like next weekend or something, but we didn't. Wonder why. <laughs> Wonder why. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, yeah, Mount Gambia's got and it's got some cool venues. I'm pretty sure. I haven't actually been out there to, yeah. to see any bands. I should go there while I'm there. I should go see some bands. Mount Gambia is almost like further than Melbourne from Adelaide. It feels you know? like it. it because you have to yeah. drive there and yeah. It's, well, I don't think you can fly in, but really, not really easily. It or feels cheaply. further. It's weird. Oh, it feels fucking forever. Just as soon as you turn off. To yeah. go down from like I think Keith or something where you yeah. turn off and you start heading down to Mount Gambia, it's like okay, we start now. Going into the desert. That's yeah. what it feels like. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a cool area though. There's some there's some really nice stuff. Oh, it's beautiful down there. Yeah, absolutely yeah. beautiful down there. And if you head down to the beaches and whatnot around there, mm. the coastline is absolutely. The coastline's fantastic. crazy there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah, it is. It is fucking crazy down yeah. there. Shit goes on. Yeah, yeah. Weird shit. <laughs> but yeah, so we, we so we work we both work together a lot and um and help each other out and pick each other yeah. up when the other ones, you know, you need a massive support network and running your own business. Yeah, you yeah. need someone, at least someone, who can get it. Yeah, you know, whether that's a partner or a best mate or a family member or something, you need someone who's who's on the same level and yeah. is cool with you working your fucking ass off and cool with you being broken at the end of the day yep. physically and mentally and is there to kind of go yep it's all good pat you on the head yeah it's pat you okay. on the head and just you know <laughs> scream a little bit and it's going to be okay um so she's she's the first person to, to get pulled into the business and to to help out um yep. and vice versa with her as well yeah cool is there anyone else you want to give a shout out to and uh Anyone else has helped you along the way? Hincy. Hincy yeah, for hooking it up. Hincy. <laughs> the H-bone. <laughs> How good's he? <laughs> He's a legend. We, we need to catch up because Hincy's going to be part of the uh, the Bucks planning party for another one of our best mates. Oh, really? Yeah. It's going to get pretty crazy. And ruin his you know, like the um, uh, the Throop brothers and all of yeah, that was, stuff as well. We were having lunch yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nick's like one of our best mates. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah, yeah, it's like I, I know those guys through motorbikes They're and whatnot. Fucking maniacs, those they guys. are fucking maniacs. Yeah. Absolute fucking animals. Bike and riding is them. is something that like like I've grown up with all those guys and yeah. going out to races and um you know hanging out at twenty four hour and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and it's it's fucking crazy. It is yeah. fucking mental. I I can't ride for the life of me. I've gone yeah. on a bike like twice in my life and put it yeah, to right. the side of a shit. <laughs> and 
those guys, yeah, they they blow my fucking mind. How crazy! Oh yeah, man. But do. like, see, I I've been to the twenty four hour. I don't like the twenty four hour. Yeah, it's fucking cold. It's wet. Yeah, it is. Yeah, there's yeah. a bunch of fucking like, and and honestly, man, like, there's a bunch of great people that fucking go and, and are around at the twenty four hour. But yeah. the main people there are grumpy old people. Oh yeah, yeah. And they are fucking rude. Yeah. They're fucking racist. Yeah. They're fucking homophobic and bigoted. Yeah. They are just fucking not nice people that- to be around. I'm like, what the fuck? Is it no wonder you're hanging out in a paddock fucking by yeah, yourself? You yeah, exactly. Fucking, I'm out of here, man. Fuck yeah, these a people. lot of the, uh, yeah, the, the general crazy. kind of community at a lot of those can those events can be definitely pretty. Oh, it was an eye opener. Pretty man. like little country kind of. Yeah, yeah. Biggity a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. first one I went to, like, because you know, being in the industry for so long, and I'd never been to one where I was working. They were like, "Oh, fucking, yeah, you got to come along. It's the best thing. It's the best thing. It's yeah. the best thing." And and they were all fucking weirdos. Yeah. Like, all right, so me and a mate of mine, like, we were like, all right, we'll, we'll go. And um, we, we went there. It was like traditional 24 weather with fucking pissing down rain miserable. and freezing fucking cold. Miserable. And they, they're, they're like- Mud everywhere. Troll. Yeah, <laughs> mud fucking Can everywhere. Can I get to any of the spots they're, you want to get to? They're like on the top of a hill for their control. Yeah. So it's just like totally exposed. And then I think we were there for maybe- three or four hours and um yeah the boss almost got into a fist fight with a girl who <laughs> who came up to him and he was he was he was just making rude sexual remarks yeah. to like a 15 year old yeah. in a paddock because she like she was wearing like a singlet with her fucking tits hanging out and it was like you know two degrees so he's rah, 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 yelling at her and then fucking they almost had a punch up man yeah. it was crazy and all family members from both sides are getting involved really? and fucking, fucking people are popping up and yelling at each other and like what the fucking Hicksville man it's pretty Fuck rowdy shit pretty oh rowdy. yeah because they're all pissed at two o'clock in the afternoon yeah exactly it's getting it's, smashed it's and, 24 hours of either racing helping yeah. someone racing or getting, or pissed. getting pissed that's that's all it is <laughs> yeah. and that's admittedly why we used to go <laughs> yeah it's, yeah it's yeah. no way yeah. I was racing yeah I'm but, sure like I'm sure that we were probably just hanging out at the wrong control with the wrong people to be honest with yeah. you but they were the only ones I knew and yeah uh, so fuck this shit yeah been yeah. twice both times just fuck this I'm gone yeah, yeah. I haven't <laughs> where been did you end up time. fucking at home man yeah. <laughs> people are idiots <laughs> yeah yeah there, there, there's some cool really cool like people in that community like there's there's there are, yeah there are definitely a lot of a lot of pretty so narrow where, where did you grow up I grew up in like on the edge of the brothel with all those guys. So okay, yeah. I grew up, I went to Birdwood High School, which is like pretty much right in the edge of the brothel in the Adelaide Hills. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's and I, I lived there up until a couple of years ago. I used to trek it down to the city all the time until yep. I moved down here. So do you know uh, Chad Schutz as well? The Schutz is I don't know specifically Chad, but the the Schutz family is just like fifty <laughs> percent of the hills. <laughs> yeah, it is. The Schutz Schutz or Schutz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they've all got massive Schutz. asses. It's a thing. Yeah, well, in I, Birdwood, every Schutz has a huge ass. Really? Yeah. Oh, Chad, well, he used to be a fucking big boy. Yeah. He's like him and three brothers. There was Eddie, um, Barney, and fucking uh, and Max and Chad. It sounds like a story. Oh, that sounds made up. It's Chad, well, Barney and Max. It, that's <laughs> um, Hincy was like like good mates with Chad. Yeah. And like so that's how I know Hincy. Yeah. And and you know hence all these these other fucking crazy people from like fucking um you dunder yeah you know like yeah yeah it's like i grew up in redwood park how the fuck do i know all these people yeah, from yeah. Yadunda? and um yeah there's some crazy shit that goes on out there there's um some very inventive fucking people yeah it's, uh every, it seems that every single person that comes from out that part of like you know outer barossa kind of region yeah are all really good at building shit yeah making shit work yeah and exactly. fucking and just working a lot everyone's like super practical and works really yeah. hard yeah. yeah it's definitely uh, that's the thing that i found moving down to the city oh i don't know maybe i might be being a bit naive but it's something i moved down to the city like the lack of practical skills a lot of people have oh yeah like you're, I, you're not imagining that man i just i i just <laughs> i grew up like where in, in a household where you just you make shit, you, you fix shit, you, something's broken, you learn how to fix it, dad knows yeah. how to fix it, you work it out. And everyone else was pretty much like that as well. Yep. And, and when I when I meet people who have like zero practical skills, yeah. I'm like, how the fuck are you alive? Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> I get it. Like, How the fuck didn't you get electrocuted? Yeah, man? yeah, what exactly. My whole life is Clips just- safety switches. 
Yeah, I reckon that's our problem. If we exactly. never had that, we would have fucking we wouldn't be paying Natural all the selection. excessive fucking hospital bills, would no, we? Exactly, <laughs> we're we're just, just gone. We'd just sort Next. it out there and done. <laughs> yeah. Just filter out the people who can't fix shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My whole life is just based around fixing shit. Like I just, I'm, I'm. That's like that whole the filter thing I was talking about. Like I just base everything like should I do it or should I think about it? It's all about like fixing shit or making shit or just doing stuff. It's all yep. about doing stuff and and if that's not involved, I'm like that's fucking pointless. Probably not gonna do that's that. Pointless. Yeah, <laughs> probably not gonna do that. Oh paperwork, that's not making any that's Oh not man. Any. See I, I found out that. my superpower is doing paperwork. Yeah, right. Like I'm for some reason I'm Mine's good at doing not. paperwork. I'm like well I ne- I never was. Yeah. I never fucking give a fuck. But I'm I'm really stubborn and fastidious. So if I cease like, you know, because starting high street, I had to do fuck loads of paperwork. Mm. And and I was just like in the zone of like, fuck you, I'm doing this. Yeah, you yeah. Fucking, you can't fucking stop me. Oh, I'm not qualified. Well, check this shit out. Yeah. <laughs> and just did fuck loads of paperwork. Yeah. And after six months of doing absolute crap loads of paperwork and, you know, getting the government to agree to all this shit and blah, 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 blah. I'm like... Holy fucking sheep shit. We can do this. How the fuck did I work out how to do yeah. any of that? Just through pure arrogance. Well, I can do <laughs> most of it. Stubbornness <laughs> and all of that kind of, all the bad things, but yeah. channeling it into yes, a useful. That's great. That's a good useful <laughs> use of, of like. Of, of being an asshole. It's, it's of, inspirational. You. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you got to channel that shit, man. Yeah. You can't yeah. let it get out of control. Yeah, exactly. You utilize that stuff and turn it into something productive yeah yeah <laughs> yeah into doing yeah into the exactly. doing stuff again yeah yeah, yeah 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 it doesn't happen often though other other than that it's just doodling on the table and that's good <laughs> are these your doodles <laughs> yeah yeah that's yeah right oh man i've Did you I've been here drunk a few times no i haven't done those they're um uh what's his name sink he's a uh, adelaide street artist yeah who, they're um, fucking cool they are yeah man yeah all this shit's got like those kind of eyes and stuff yeah all, like he's done some fucking fantastic trippy ass shit right it's awesome you'll notice it around the city now you'll see fucking just I love that, bits man. and pieces it's sick eh last year like I've started noticing like different artists and meeting artists and, and like as soon as you meet someone and you you recognise their style uh, or you know you just click onto their personal little thing yeah all of a sudden it's fucking everywhere and you yeah. notice it i've noticed yeah. that so much with a whole bunch of like you know people that i've met and different artists that i've met yeah you've been looking at their stuff for years and years and years and not known and then all of a sudden you know what makes them theirs. So yeah. you're like oh man it's fucking and everywhere you are so it good it just starts popping out of fucking all sorts yeah. of little nooks and crannies and yeah. down alleys and fucking just like hey wait a minute that sticker there yeah fucking yeah what the fuck is that i know that shit exactly damn it. yeah there's a few people who've done like pay stuff at my shop and yep. and I, I, like met them and and like as soon as I did that and recognised their stuff like the chick who does little Furbies around town oh yeah 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 she came in because the back of my shop is like the it faces into a car park and there's a whole bunch of cool paste ups there yeah and um and apparently it's like this gold mine of a spot to get to everyone wants that spot which is like the back of my shop because you just can't get to it yeah unless right. you go into my shop or you take a ladder and climb on top of someone's building yeah which is pretty common except for a spot like that which is really exposed so they came in to the shop and they're like can we get to your back and like do some paste ups I'm like fuck yeah I want more artwork <laughs> everywhere cover yeah, the place yeah, yeah. this is sick and they're like yes and then so man them and um and yeah, it was the chick who does the little Furbies around town. Yep. And she showed me, I'm like, oh, I see them all the time. That was really cool. Yeah. And then literally since then, I'm like, they're fucking everywhere. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. That's and there's crazy. a guy who does the little Mario Brothers things as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see them all the time the as well. Tentacles? I love cool. the tentacles. Yeah. <laughs> that sick. dude is fucking good, eh? Yeah. He's, um, uh, we saw him doing a, uh, at the Wonderwalls Festival oh, yeah. down at yep. Port Adelaide doing a big mural with his fucking so tentacle fucking cool. stuff and like, Oh, fucking brilliant yeah yeah I love that festival that's a great that festival that's sick that it's is so awesome. fucking cool um, we were talking to uh, a few months ago talking to Port Adelaide Enfield Council and saying hey great fucking festival man but what else was there yeah yeah why wasn't there like they had some they had a DJ playing some music 
but they really should have had some live bands. Yeah. Um, they had uh, all this open area, like because they use so much of Port Adelaide, they've got so much of a vast open area. Why wasn't there anyone skating or riding bikes mm. or fucking mm. like- you've It got should this be a huge, festival. Yeah, yeah. It's not a festival. It's 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 like the artwork and the, the, the concept behind it is really fucking cool, but it's yeah. not really that entertaining, especially if you're not inclined to walk the entire thing. That's right. If you're not yeah. going to map it out yeah. and walk it, it's, it's there's not much to do. Yeah. It's, yes, which is put, which is that's like just is exactly what Port Adelaide is. Port Adelaide is this place that has so much potential to be so fucking yep. cool. Oh man, like I, 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 before I was looking at my place, I was like, I got my place. I was looking at doing the renew places. Yeah, do you know what renew is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How'd so, you go with them? Um, they yeah, they were really good. Um, I didn't end up getting a place through them. Yeah, but that was a pretty much the number one option for a long time like it's when the right place pops up yeah get a renew so they were really they were really keen to jump on board they were like because the whole thing is having unique pace businesses and and business ideas and so they were they pretty much said like if if a place pops up that's appropriate for you you can have it it's yeah it's yours yeah um no matter what the competition is they were really cool and they they were um contacting me lots and um you know really cool but um there was a really good place in Port Adelaide that popped up through them that I could have taken um, and good size areas, bigger than what I've got now. Mm. Would have worked out really well, but it's a, such a gamble in that area. It is. Which sucks because it's such a fucking cool area. Yeah. Um, I've got some friends who live down there and um, Em and I go down there whenever we can. We go to like lots of different events down there and just go down to the pubs down there. Yeah. He's such a gnarly area. Yeah, it's brilliant. It, it's got it's just so like much potential. Just missing this like leap of, you know, yeah. injection of culture to, and it, I think it, I think it literally just needs like a generation of youth it does, yeah. Living in that area. Yeah, yeah. And hopefully that's going to happen. I mean, they're, they're doing it some will. things that yeah. are going to encourage that. But I, mm. I hope that it doesn't get quashed before it begins. Exactly. Because it's, um, it seems to have had that bit of influx and now it's yeah. just dropping away a little bit. Mm. But, you know, on the other side of that influx, I mean, people like um, Renew Adelaide who, who were tasked to, yeah. you know... Um, activate some exactly. spaces yeah. they really just weren't they were activating what they wanted not yeah. what the place needed mm-hmm. and that's why they're not there anymore yeah um i i hope that um that the council there can get either off their asses and get some shit together to make people happy in that area yeah or that the state government needs to fucking step in and yeah. and turn that into adelaide st kilda yeah because exactly. we've, we've got glenelg and glenelg is the family friendly yeah um, slightly toffee version yeah, yeah slightly yeah. toffee version and we have port adelaide that has so much potential it's yeah. like port adelaide and semaphore are just right there yeah it's got so much history in, exactly. in our state and it's got so much history in creation and creativity and all those things as like a it just needs a fucking as as a cultural hub it's so fucking cool. There's, yeah, there's, yeah. there's so much of like everything that came into Adelaide was through there at one point. Yeah, yeah. And there was so much manufacturing. And Do you know where the uh, Colac Hotel is? It's not, um, it's not my it's, head. You know where the- It's one of the Dock- 47 hotels. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it is one of those. Yeah. And you know where the Dock 1 precinct is? Yeah, yeah. So it's like there's a hotel. It's not open at all. It's fucking kind of run down. It's like right at the top of that kind of wharf, the yep. Dock 1 precinct. Yeah. And um, we were looking at that like, who the fuck owns that? Why is that shut down? Mm-hmm. That is such an amazing fucking spot. Like, it's brilliant. Um, what the hell's going on there? So I did a bit of research on it. And- it turns out the Colac Hotel used to be owned by the Labor Party. Oh, really? Yeah, it used to be wow. owned by the Labor Party and they used to rent it out to fucking um, this publican who was a bikey. So yeah. it was run by bikies from the 60s through to the early 90s. Wow. Um, and uh, and <laughs> and there's some wild fucking stories behind yeah. Labor Party parties yeah, yeah. at the Colac Hotel. And this goes back into like painters and dockers days and shit like that. You yeah. know, like yeah. some pretty fucking hardcore motherfuckers are down there. Yeah. And then I was reading something, like I said, we've got this interview coming up with Leon Bignall. Oh, yeah, yeah. So he's a Labor Party member and I'm stalking his Facebook and shit and going back and there's a picture of him with Bob Hawke. 
and he must be, you know, 17, 18 years old and he's there with his dad and Bob Hawke. They're in the fucking Colac uh, Hotel. Yeah. And they're there when, and, and like he's written some of me, he's like, oh, I love this photo. This reminds me so much about when Kim Beasley won this sculling competition or some <laughs> shit yeah, yeah. with Bob Hawke and fucking like, what the fuck? Man, now that place has got some history. So I'm at Port Adelaide Enfield Council and, um, and they had this little flyer. I was waiting for a meeting and they had this little flyer and it was sitting there and it had all the history of pubs in, in Port Adelaide. So I'm like, oh, where's the Colac Hotel in this? And and that is like the first recording of activities of anything at, happening at the Colac Hotel was a Swedish, or I'm pretty sure it was a Swedish sailor who was murdered there. Um, uh, he was stabbed with a fucking bottle, like someone bottled him and fucking yeah. killed him when he was stopped there in the docks. <laughs> And like that's that's the earliest record of anything happening at the Colac and I'm like it's, man that place is fucked up. It's horrible <laughs> as it Port is Adelaide. for that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I love the history behind that country. I love it's the, crazy. I, I fucking I love dirty, yep. scungy, yep. like worn out areas. Yeah, I love that. I yep. love the you know like it's it's the, the lived in the lived in like Things everything's have broken in places yep. rough but not not neat and tidy. That's I love that shit. I, yeah, it's just. It's me. That's why I like this building. Yeah. This yeah, building is like just, this, yeah. yeah, it's like a hundred years old. It's fucking, yeah. it's uh, it's definitely well lived in. <laughs> but it's, it's kind of cool. Like, yeah, yeah, it is. It is. When you look at this fucking place compared to the ones on either side of it, it's like yeah. you've got these two dreary ass fucking just square, yeah. square, square windows, square things. everything. And yeah. this has got like beautiful lead light fucking shit. Yeah. It's got really nice facade on it. Yeah. You walk in and you're like, where the fuck? This is like a... This rabbit hole of just yeah. all sorts of Anything shit. Anything could happen. So fucking cool. That is, yeah. that, Adelaide's got some wicked stuff like that. Yeah. Wicked makers, wicked little, like, you know, even through the mall, some of the buildings in there are just like these absolute rabbit warrens of stuff. There's, yeah, for sure. Um, and, and there's so much cool shit just hidden down like nooks and crannies. Dude, we've and, even got a guitar maker on fucking Hindley Street. Got a guitar eh? maker on Hindley Street. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. Who came crazy. from Barossa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Usually people go the other way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you could go the other way and make fancy ass fucking guitars out of wine barrels and I stuff could. and sell them for a billion dollars probably will fucking you should should you should damn it's a good idea yeah I'm, I'm gonna do that <laughs> but yeah the idea of a guitar maker in Highland Street isn't that fucking ridiculous if you told me if you told me 10 years ago that I was gonna have a shop on Highland Street and I was that I was gonna be making guitars and, and have my own shop and have it on yeah. Highland Street I want to just like what? That's all right, man. Some, someone tripping? told me a month ago that there was a dude making guitars on Highland Street. Yeah. And I'm like, get fucked, get man. Fucked. No way. What the There's fuck no is that shit? doing that shit. Yeah. <laughs> There's some dudes up there with machines and shit and making stuff there. Yeah. No, yeah. It's all everything else on Highland Street is just fucking shisha bars and yeah. nightclubs. So and shisha bars. Fucking, there are heaps now, mm. eh? It's like four of them so in many. a row at yeah. one point. <laughs> There was the other day when the Conor McGregor fight was on. There was um, a whole bunch of them, like sitting in a shisha bar, looking across the road at one of the like the massive, like big. Oh screens. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were sitting in the shisha bar, like looking across the road, watching the fight on the other side of the road. <laughs> so good. That is gold. That is <laughs> the cheapest anywhere. way to put on the yeah, fight. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, boys, don't worry about it, man. Spark up the shishas again and fucking. Yeah. We're just watching. We're just watching on the big screen. <laughs> we're just look around. through the wall shed, fucking windows. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was <laughs> wicked. I loved it. All right, man. Well, thanks for coming in, dude. Thank you. It's been fucking it great. And yeah. Um, yeah, keep fucking making guitars. I'm gonna have to come down and have a look. Damn straight. Fuck yeah. Beers of mine. <laughs> <Hey. laughs>